welcome back to Shanghai for live coverage of the Dota 2 Asia Championships 2017. Halfway through the day today, or nearly halfway through, because we're into our second and final lower bracket round two game. Evil Genius is going head to head with Faceless. We've also changed the panel a little bit. Gods has popped downstairs, getting ready to cast this one. We've replaced him with Capitalist and also PPD and Purge back with us. Cap, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the next series. I yeah, think. It's a big uh, game. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, mm. Evil Geniuses, they've been a little bit tested, I think, throughout this tournament. And uh, we'll see if Faceless can actually step up and take it to EG. Yeah. Might be a little bit one-sided, I'm not sure. We've got an Infiltrator amongst our, amongst our panel right now, so I'm going to turn to Purge before I come to PvD. Um, is this the archetypal Gladiator versus, you know, David versus Goliath matchup? I think a little, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was unexpected to see Faces beat Liquid in some ways. Uh, I wonder if Liquid would have won a best of three. Um, but expecting Faceless to take EG out in two wins is going to be a little tough. Though I mm -hmm. think their, their strats have been a little bit straightforward. So, and I feel like EG is good at dissecting strats as well. So I, I think they easily have the upper hand here in this okay. match. All right, PPD, our, our spy in the G camp. What have you What have you learned this morning? I le I learned a lot, especially <laughs> last night, because it was it was fun. I, I took the game off. I, I asked to like if I could watch the game with Fear and Phil, and we were up in the EG booth somewhere around here watching right. the game, and you know, it was it was fun. We were just kind of casually watching EG just kind of. Uh, progressively win the game, and all of a sudden, there's an alacrity Earth Panda <laughs> hitting the barracks. I'm like, oh, he took the tower. Whoa, he took the. Oh, he took the barracks. Like, what? The barracks is gone, and then the second barracks went down. And all of a sudden, we were just like, this is already starting to get a little dark up here. Yeah. <laughs> real, real quick question for you, Peter. Uh, did did EG remember about that interaction? So, yeah, I, I talked to the team after uh -huh. they, and I rode I rode home back home back to the hotel with them, and. They actually had forgotten. <laughs> it seemed like about it. I was the like Alacrity Earth Spirit <laughs> Panda, and it's funny because they were actually all in Discord watching the the Starlighter tournament because they didn't mm -hmm. attend, so they already had already seen Wings do it, but they just totally spaced about it until it, you until, know, until it happened, until the mm. barracks was gone. Yeah. Um, but regardless of saying, I think that the team was incredibly happy and relieved that they ended up winning the game. Um, testament to them that was that was tough being two racks down and still pulling it back. I think they made some right moves on kind of fighting outside the base. Uh, yeah. Crit had like a little bit of a pop off in there after mm -hmm. they won. He like got super excited and after the game he said it was like the most satisfying game he's ever won. Mm. And he's won a major. Yeah. Yeah. He, but it was said it was one of the most intense matches he's ever played in as well. Exactly. And it's because it was in that best of one. They were I would say they were favorites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's for like it's for last place. So if you lose <laughs> and you lose to this in this manner, it's got to be so disappointed. Yeah. So winning and kind of coming back from a you know being down two racks is definitely yeah. very satisfying. After they were up as well, so it was like they had it, yeah. and they lost it. They Imagine were about to be eliminated, and then they came back. Yeah, it's so cheesy it's too. Perfect. It's like I think it's yeah. like one of like the, the purest strats. cheese strats still in Dota. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we we don't really have too many like level one Roshans it's or anything cheese. like that anymore, <laughs> right? But we still have that. It's, uh, yeah, I, I think like the reason I asked that is because it definitely looked like EG were caught by surprise by that, and it was a very different playstyle. Like leading up into that, they're like, "Oh yeah, we just let them push. We can yeah. take this high ground fight." And then afterwards, it was like, "Oh God, <laughs> get out there! Don't let them ever get near our base." Yeah, they had to learn as they went, and yeah. Spectre like didn't have like a huge impact on the game, but like Zion the Monkey King was actually really farmed. I think later in the game, they realized that the Monkey King ultimate was actually really strong at killing off the the panda split. Yeah. Uh, so they started really as adapting to the game. Mm. Um, maybe it was like a little too late, but they they learned, and I guess it wasn't too late, right? Yeah, I was I mean, about to say that's the, game. the that's the important part. They only lost half their barracks yeah. before they figured out how to deal with it. <laughs> that's probably why it was so intense, right? It's like something completely unexpected happened to them, and then they're down, and they had to, to quickly adapt to that. I think that says a lot about EG and the the caliber of a team that they yeah. are. Uh, and in terms of their opponents, faceless, uh, not expected much out of them, and then when they when they go in the group, you sort of think, yep, it's probably about what we thought. And then they come out yesterday and actually you know, pulled off a win that no one really thought they were capable of doing. So uh, presumably they must be on the crest of a wave, yeah, Kevin. They come into this with no nothing to lose. Everyone's expecting them to lose again. So that's fine. They can play how they want. I think so. Um, it's the only downside is it might be a little predictable, but I, I think they've they've shown some really good games where they showed impressive strats. Um, they might be a little bit straightforward sometimes, but um, I, th I think they definitely have the potential for an upset here. It's just going to be difficult for them yeah. and uh, unlikely compared to EG winning. Sure. Do they do they um, they play around with the draft again? We've seen them do it already. That's possible. I think they're going to pick Terrorblade. Yeah. That's my expectation. Okay. Uh, most likely Earth Spirit as well if they can get it. Maybe Monkey King. I don't think I've seen them play Monkey King too no. much, but. I think it might, they might change it up a little bit. Yeah. Could be a ban, as like, Zai proved that he could play it very well. That's true. 
in the yeah. last game. Got to be careful, especially when you when you know that your team doesn't necessarily play it, and you know there is a good player on the other side. It's it's almost that first phase ban, isn't it now? No, uh, well, I mean, we'll have to I mean wait you, and said, see. you said yourself it's broken. It's a it is broken. <laughs> it, is, it is a best of three though, so they do get like you know they could lose the first game and they could mm -hmm. try and play against Monkey King if they wanted to. Yeah. But I really I really think they they should just ban it or play it themselves. Yeah. So first game only, just to see how they. I would say no games okay. would be my yeah. recommendation, yeah. but if they really wanted to experiment, the first game would be the one. First, the first game yeah. is the game to lose, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah if, yeah. I'm, I'm, if I'm Faces, I don't want to lose that first game. I think, think it's really important for them. If they're yeah. going to win the series. Then, uh, yeah, then? Like yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see them winning being able to win like back-to-back -back games okay. against EG necessarily, or maybe that's the only way they close out the series is like 2-0, but right. I only see them like 2-0 or 1-0-1 is like how they win. I don't think they come back from a first loss. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's like something about like faceless I don't think they perform particularly strong it was surprising they beat liquid but honestly it actually it was surprising they beat liquid but it was not surprising that liquid lost given the form that they've shown so far yeah. they've been super shaky as well and they also seem kind of emotional um I don't, it, like sometimes that's a good thing sometimes it's a bad thing yeah. but uh, I think that first loss and considering they're already the David versus Goliath scenario I I don't think they can come back from what did, a first what game loss put, uh, what weight do you put on their their mentality in the sense that Yesterday, they kind of crushed some demons from the group stage. In the group stage, they were ahead in four of their matches, and they lost three of them in the late game. And that wasn't necessarily composition. It wasn't necessarily they were up against the late game composition in the other team. It was things they did fundamentally wrong in those games. And, and yet, yesterday, they were much better, more disciplined, took it all the way to the late game, and then won sure. the match. So... Surely that's helped them, isn't it? They're not going to go back to their old ways of, of the group stage. I mean, I think I think it helps them a little bit, but I think they're also very smart and very experienced players on that mm. team. And I think they also recognize that, uh, you know, that that wasn't just them performing, you know, really good. That was also Liquid dropping the ball quite heavily. So yeah. uh, I think they'll recognize. Dota that. is like a, you know, it's it can be an hour long game sometimes, and you can lose a game in 15 seconds. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's I think we just saw that in the last exactly. game. Exactly. So yeah. you got to be, you know, you got to be on and on top of your game at all times and uh, for a team like Faceless who's kind of an underdog playing against an incredibly good team like Liquid or EG, they'll take advantage if you if you slip up, they'll take advantage of it. Yeah, and they've got the players you. to do it, haven't they? You've got the players to punish you. Absolutely. Sumail yeah. Sumail is very good at identifying those opportunities yeah. and just kind of going for it. So, we'll okay. see. I all also right. haven't been a particular fan of Faceless's uh I w I would say kind of change the play style. Um, when I was earlier watching them, I thought that they had this really good idea of being able to enable Ice Ice Ice, who I feel like is the, you know, kind of their, their star player in yep. some ways. That I, I feel like he oftentimes is what's going to be able to create so many win conditions for you early. And what they did early on was that they always enabled him by usually having some sort of like really nice aggressive duo with like XY and Ice Ice Ice. And Ice 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 would be able to, you know, be able to accomplish a lot in his in his laning phase. And then he would be able to play this like super like hyper aggressive where he would just like disappear off the map. And then he would play this like heavy gang style where it was really hard to keep up with. But right. Um, I don't know, and the meta did change, and maybe they felt like that wasn't as effective, um, maybe because teams are beginning to group up a little bit more, but I, I really like that style, and I thought it fit uh, particularly Ice Ice Ice, but um, I don't know, they seem to have changed that up a little bit, and I feel like we're not seeing the same impact from their offlaner anymore. Yeah. Um, in terms of matchups, other matchups in the game, well, what else are you looking forward to? Hmm. Head to heads. Um, I think the the mid matchup could be pretty exciting. Um, you know, I think Jabs has been playing fairly well. Uh, he sometimes I, I think the one thing that's going to hurt Jabs the most is probably that uh, the supports on EG are going to be better at pressuring him than vice versa. So um, I think in an individual skill, he's he can definitely be up there. I don't think he's good as as good as Samuel, but um, he can definitely create a lot of space. I'm, I'm imagining him getting a, a, a top tier hero like maybe Tinker or something, actually making the game really difficult for for EG potentially. So I'd like to see the supports from. Uh, Faceless do like some really weird like smoke rotations onto Sumail. I think that, and then if Jabs gets like a killer two on Sumail with their help, I think like that'll really set him up to have a really successful game. Yeah. And I think that's something that they might be able to do this game to kind of throw EG off, especially in game one, because EG is a kind of team that they get they actually get a little upset when teams do random and weird things. They're like, <laughs> he shouldn't be there. Like, th like they think about like you know, not only do they think about a good way for them to play the game, they're very aware of like the proper sure. and like maybe like the best way for the other team to play the game. So when somebody does something a little weird that they don't think is necessarily the right play, 
they're not always ready for it. Right. Yeah, they're like a three-man gank on like our you know off laner or something. Like, how is that efficient? Like, look at all the space yeah, we're yeah. getting. That's, but that's it's, a, that's it a, still gets in your head. It's like a classic Artizi quote. I remember like playing with him and like butting heads with him. And him just I'm just being like, you cannot show on the map there. You cannot do that. And he's like, but they should not be here. Like, this is such a bad play from them. They're supposed to be over there farming or doing Roshan, but they're just here sitting here doing nothing. So and that kind of stuff snowballs. So you get into that say, mindset. Is it actually two C game? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he gets super mad when things yeah. like that happen. But he, I think he's matured a lot as a player, so I think yeah. he can handle it. And he did a great job last night as Spectre, just kind of like staying in the trees and really, um, you know, being aware of his opponents not being on the map. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you actually about it because in the group stages, particularly in the last few games of the group stages, he had to play Life Stealer. Maybe not the best suited to that. I mean, he plays it perfectly well, but it, yeah. in his style and the way we expect to see him play, and yet he played very much for the team in those games. This and the is same a, with the Spectre as well. This is, tr I think, this is the worst patch for carry players. Hmm. Um, <laughs> everybody gets incredibly farmed. All the supports have all these talents, and they get, you know, relatively tanky. And carry players, they just can't kill heroes by themselves anymore. Like that's 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 what I've noticed in this patch. These mid players, they play such higher impact heroes. They're so much flashier. They can do solo kills at the end. Like at 50, 60 minutes, we see these mid players like almost like you know one v fiving at times yeah, and blowing stuff up. Carry players, uh, it's it's just not there. Yeah, I, you, you can see like the impact of all these all these carry players reacting to the poor man shield change. You know, like that was just one of there was just one of many small things that have like gone against carry players time and time again. I think that's where like heroes like Life Stealer, right, where you're kind of granted a one v one opportunity. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Mm. Feels better than everything else that's happening to carry players. But I, I, I put it to you that a year ago, that would have that would have caused our tour to be a bit more. Mm, yeah, upset it's about tough. it. But it's he's tough, a, he's but the, playing for the team. The right patch now. is what the patch is, yeah. and you got to play to win. Yeah. So. And the, the carry heroes, they have to they have to contribute like consistently to, to a certain play style and they have to not be able to be pressured. They have to be they have to be heroes that are good against dual lanes, they're good against solo lanes, they're good against aggro try. I feel like it forces all these carries to be these like these heroes that do have trouble getting solo kills. Whereas the mid player has more variability. You're like, well I'm probably in a one V one, maybe there's a roamer, maybe in rare cases it'll be a like a roaming like a a two V one or something. Unless they have Monkey King. Yeah. Unless if they, they have Monkey, Monkey King, King then the carry gets free farm. Yeah basically because they it's can it's actually zone. Huh? If it sits in lane with it. Yeah, 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 well, they will sit in lane. Yeah. At least I know. Well, we've seen a few that have just jumped all over the map. And very, it's changing. It's, it's very changing, ineffective. It's changing very quickly, yeah. and I think teams are realizing his potential as kind of like a zoning support. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about Black on the other side of this, uh, face this. Uh, our, our old friend from last year spent a lot of time with all of us on the panels, mm -hmm. and uh, he was very frustrated, I think, Cap, as well. He always wanted chopping at the bit to get yeah. back into competitive game. Finally gets himself a decent team. How do you assess his uh, DAC so far? Um... DAC has been okay for him. Uh, I don't think he's like I was really impressed by Black and his his changing of play style. A lot of carries, you know, older carries. They had a hard time adjusting. I think there was this window of last year where we just watched some of these guys and they were just being a little bit too farmy, not active enough. Well, newer carries were coming forward and showing like how good it was to be yep. super aggressive on that safe lane position. And um, I think Black has made some of that transition. Still yet to be determined how uh, effective he can really be for the team. Um, just been kind of okay. Hasn't been like the downside for them. I would say up until yesterday, this this event has been a train wreck for Faceless. Uh, yeah. I mean, for Black in particular. For the entire team. Yeah. They they got like almost like what they got last place in their group. Yeah. Right. They were in Group A, the easier group. They got last place in the the weaker group, and. I mean, they won a best of one yesterday against Liquid. All the props to them. Black played incredibly well on Stark. The whole team just seemed to click yesterday. But that was the only day they played well. Mm. The very last day of the group stage, Black got kicked off a of carry. <laughs> he was playing offlane clockwork because Ice 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 said, nah, I think I'm a better juggernaut than you. I, you know, I was thinking about the Slark play, though. The Slark play was really good. So I was like, well, that, that was kind of good for Black. Yeah, well, let's not sugarcoat it. The yeah. team the team's definitely <laughs> been going through a rough tournament. But they won. They're into the top 12. They have an opportunity to to beat you know, one of the giants of this tournament in EG, and there's no better time to prove yourselves and gain some confidence going into majors and up, up into the TI season. I liked how you Peter, looked Peter, over you your corner there. Stuff. That was good. Really? I try to be nice when I can. <laughs> Did you see how Was he looked it very over? selective? 
<laughs> Do you see how he looked over his uh, shoulder before he start, like really went in a little bit? He's like, are they? Is he close? Is he close? Is he open air behind range? us? There's actually nothing behind us. <laughs> I'm a little worried about the supports over here. It seems a little shaky. <laughs> Just gotta check in mid sentence in case the thing's gonna fall. Yeah, yeah indeed. Uh, yeah. So mm. uh, we are getting ready for our first draft of the first game in this second series of the day. Don't forget, uh, we also have the 1v1 competition going on this evening as well, so don't want to miss that. Semi-finals and grand final brought to you by Toby1 and Melini as well. And also, Team Empire will be involved in the next matchup where they'll play uh, a, a, a Vitality, who won, of course, earlier on today. So they get two games today, two sets of series. We've got our own conversation about that earlier on, Peter. Do you want to bring that up? About what? We were discussing over breakfast this morning, weren't we? This oh. whole, you know, the format sometimes mean that you can't fit all the matches in you'd like to fit in because of time and the lower and bracket teams. You. Yeah, they gotta work bracket. a little so, harder. So we have three today, which we should have four, really, shouldn't we? If it was absolutely fair, possibly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could do it that way. Yeah, but or two. So technically, whoever wins this match has a better day than it, IGB. Correct. Yes. That's the thing. Though, if if EG wins today. Or if but they get two games tomorrow. They get two, no, potentially. But, they, but it's a little different because now they're playing to get in round of eight, yeah. which is potentially a weaker opponent. And then yeah. next time they'll be playing to get to six and then to four, yeah. which could be stronger opponents. Yeah. So you have to play a stronger opponents twice in the same day. Yeah. Either way around, it's, it's a little different. But It's a little unfair, I just yeah, it's, feel. You know, it's okay. Tricky to solve, though. I like that attitude. Don't get a loser bracket. I Yeah. It's that simple. It's Don't not lose. that simple, but... <laughs> We all have the These guys have a great opportunity to play video games for lots of money. Yeah, millions. They'll be fine. Millions of dollars. I think that will that will help. Okay. Uh, I think uh, the uh, players are about to come out onto the stage. No, no. Can we switch over and have a look and see what's going on the main stage? Not, not, not just yet. Okay. All right. Well, we'll wait for the uh, players to come out, and in the meantime, we'll continue talking about these two teams. Uh, in the way that they're set up right now, Evil Geniuses should win this one 2 zero on paper. Yeah, I think 2-0 two two is uh, the most likely. Um, I could definitely see a 2-1. Um, I think it'd be a really tough for Faceless to, to close it out 2-0. I'd be very, very surprised. That would be like top right of threat, the downfall of EG kind of a thing. But uh, it's unlikely. I don't think it's going to be tough. I think yeah. the games are going to go late. And we talked about the later the game goes, the more opportunities there are going to be for EG to claw back in the game if they are down. Uh, I think that I think something to look out for is Hannah Midas. I, I have a, an inkling that there's going to be a couple of Hannah Midas that's purchased in this series. What makes you think that? I, insider information. <laughs> I'm, I'm abusing my role. Yeah. Oh. No, I, but they, I think they bought like three or four in their game yesterday. Yeah. yeah. It, I, it does seem like the the window for closing out games in mid game is just not really there. So these Hannah Midas is really value. It's why the Chinese were picking up like four Midas's per team uh, going into DAC. It's kind of absurd. But so you think about Puck, like Universe on Puck, for example. He mm -hmm. went Blink Dagger, and then he bought Hand of Midas. Yeah. And you buy that Hand of Midas, so that way you can get to your talents faster. 420. And once you get to level 25, it gets 420 GPM. Die so once, you get 1,000 gold. You could buy you know, a Yules or a Four Staff or some sort of team fight item that could help you, you know, win fights and get more gold in that way. Or you can get to level 25 <laughs> and not even have to risk it. <laughs> you just sit there and collect gold. It's <laughs> it. It's like a comedy every time I see Daryl come out for one of these things. I like the slippers. Or not the slippers, the sandals, excuse me. Sandals, yeah. He just always has them. He, he looks like he's being blinded. He's just this laser focus. He's thinking about his next move in game. Are they you know, all in sponsor regulation here? Or? Yeah, everyone's good. They got their black pants on. Jerseys. Oh damn! I didn't know the pants were standing. Yeah, I wow. noticed that. It's all black jeans. Wow. Crit, crit, are those pants blue? Oh, uh oh. Was, oh, our tour's wearing jeans. All is that right. a, is that a fine? I'll have some words later. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good. Cat, you gross. Nah, that's good. <laughs> and we point out the uh, the There's errors, no, man. That's our job. Nobody's wearing red shorts, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, we have a few of our social media questions, of course. There are lots on the. Uh, social media threads right now, but if you do want to add to them, please feel free to add your question as well. And we'll see if we can get it answered by the panel members. Our latest question is this: SCA lacks a coaching culture. Is it needed for teams to achieve success, Peter? No. Coaches are very under overrated. I would say. Ooh. Yeah, I think we're not far enough. Would we you Would you say overrated, excluding fear, or do you think fear is like also people are attributing maybe too much impact uh, mm. fear's position on the team? Fear helps connect the team for a lot of reasons, and that's because he knows everyone so well. Yeah. You know, we've, this like group of EG, like myself included, and Artur and Zai, and sure, and like we've been, you know, there's been a little bit of team changing, but we've almost been like a unit for like three years now, um, just like the group of guys. 
and we all know each other and we know it's important to like get along and fear is like a very intermediary because he's always like level-headed and he keeps the team together but there's not a lot of players like fear fear's like a great example because he's played for so long and he's had success and people respect him yeah it's very hard to find um, yeah it's, it, it, you can't really listen to a coach that you don't respect right yeah and i think like og is another great example with uh walking mad who yep. has played a lot of professionally didn't have the most success but They've proven results as a team, so they've kind of gained respect for him in that way. And uh, he was always good at drafting as well, which is ideally the best coach thing to but have. It's, yeah, that's a unique mm. example. There's not a lot of like retired players who have the respect of a team, um, because a lot of times players retire from playing out of like necessity or like because they're you know they get into coaching because they're not good enough to play. Yeah, I think Matt's good, but I think he's a little overrated as a coach. Good mean. Old, oh, old memes. Oh, oh. Old oh. memes, sorry. Couldn't resist. But it checks out. It, it does check out. out no, you got me. I, I totally, <laughs> I totally like, my meme game, you know, uh, I slipped up. Sorry. Slipping up on the old meme no, games. That was you need to thought. go to Sir Action Selects' school for memeing. I'm glad so, and then you'll be picking it up. So, are you, uh, let's see, you got Fear, Mad. Is there any other coaches that you think, like, yeah, you, really you, worth the success? Do you think, like, Boba was one of those coaches, for example? You said SVG was useful. Yeah. yeah. SVG. Yeah, I mean, yeah I mean, those guys are great thinkers, so... But the thing is, like, they still, there's always, like, that little thing where it's, like, should I listen to this guy? Yeah. Uh, we use, so we how use how Bulba rate, and SVG a little banana differently. Banana huh? How do you rate Banana in China? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I that's... don't know how his team operates. I don't know what he does. Okay. I know for, like, for like Bulba and SVG, is like, they weren't, like, these amazing players that we had the most respect for, um, for their play. But the thing is, they were great thinkers, so I could bounce my ideas off of them. And right. they were great people to, you know, we did lots of mock drafting at these huge tournaments, so I would draft as if I was EG, and they would try to put themselves, and you would put their head in the position of the opposing team, and they would yeah. draft, you know, they would draft like Vici would draft. Right. Peter, you said that coaches are overrated, yet every coach that you've worked with, you said, are valued. And <laughs> now when we ask about coaches you haven't, don't know or haven't worked with, you say you have no idea. So I feel like... Oh, shit, you're actually... I feel like you're kind <laughs> of contradicting yourself What are you little. doing here? I, I thought we were on the same team. Undermining I mean, we we are, credibility. I haven't, Come on, like, dude. I haven't, like, called you out on anything this entire <laughs> weekend. This is one of those moments. Yes and, Kevin. Yes oh. and. I, I mean... <laughs> War has been declared. <laughs> oh, that's the end of the civility now. <laughs> the I'm, truce I'm is not over. Purge, I would suggest not suggesting even, any heroes in the draft. <laughs> all right? I even, I even if went with them on the draft. Off. I went with them on the game three draft, and he led me wrong. We, we, we were yeah. right. They just they threw it. That's all. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't. Oh uh, no! no. I mean, what? You, you guys had a sniper versus a Luna. No, no actual initiators. Come on. Uh, I think Makes a good I, point. I, I, I think, no, is this no, game no. about to start? I'm, I'm, I'm still <laughs> thinking about the other stuff. No, I would just say, um, if you go on like Reddit or something, there's a lot of times where a team has a lot of success streaks, and they'll they'll circle jerk the the coaches, be like the coaches are sh clearly what pushed them over the edge. I would say there's maybe some overvalue there, but I think it's definitely worth it for for every team to have a sixth person on the on the team that has more brain power. Because I uh, at least when I was playing, it's every player has all this time like playing pubs, scrimming doing team practice stuff, um, free time. And if you have a sixth person that literally just focuses on team improvement and trends and, yeah, some of the social aspects, I feel like every team can benefit for that. But so that's, that's why the, the coaches are all very different for every team, aren't they? Fear, are for they? Instance, well, I don't know. I mean, fear, fear is handling personalities as well as helping strategies sure. and ideas and giving them thoughts. No, you're another, 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 another coach might only be there as a life coach, like Heen, for instance. He's not a life coach. Blitz is more like it, the life coach. Blitz is more yeah. like, yeah. In, 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 blitz yeah. covers some Dota stuff, but he's I, the, I think he's that he's... a team psychologist. Yeah, I think his yeah. biggest contribution is that he just understands people really sure. well, so he makes a, a team fit together better. Okay. All right. Interesting discussion on, on so coaches. So maybe, maybe coach, do you think C needs coaches then to help them improve? I, I, I figured that when I first read the question, I thought it was more financial infrastructure than I thought of... The fact that they just don't like co coaches. I mean, I, I maybe um, the first point that you made about needing somebody that you respect. Maybe yeah. that's a big issue there. Yeah, maybe it's not the coaches. It's, it's the term, thing. isn't it? The terminology. But maybe it's a sixth is more appropriate. Could sure. be another player. Could be someone who's maybe not in a team right now can help them out. Could be a stats person. It's the same. Yeah, it's like the It's like almost the same thing with casters, right? Yeah. Like a lot of times, casters are like afraid to have strong opinions because people are going to be like, "Well, what does he know?" Yeah. yeah. It's, it's the same sure. thing with coaches. What do you think about that? And it's hard to work. I, I, I no, no, okay. I'm interested <laughs> in the caster side of things. You, you've been a player. I don't you've know. been on the end of some of those I, I, criticisms. Who's wrong? Who's right? Let's no, go. No, no, no. Let's I go, think, Peter. I just think that people should be careful about how they present their how they present their opinions. That's yeah. all. I just don't want. I just want there to be like 
constructive criticism and not just like, oh, this guy, this guy's playing so bad. Or I, I just, I think whenever I listen to casters, I only ever really get upset when I hear someone be like, oh, if I was, if I was this <laughs> guy, I would have got this item, and that would have led, that would have led, that would have made us win. Yeah. And instead of thinking like, oh, why did he buy BKB here instead, of, or why did he, why did he buy Octarine Core instead yeah. of um, Aghanims, kind of a thing. It's like maybe give him a chance as the professional player to validate his his choice right. and maybe he had an idea that didn't work out but at the end of the day like he's a professional player and he's in the position that he's in because of how good he is and how smart he is okay so so it's okay just needs respect i, th I think like the little bit of salt here and there adds adds a little bit i'm not trying we to need the drama peter don't we i'm not trying Come to on. i'm not trying to turn anything over i just i don't know i just i'm just trying to have fun with it okay all right let's uh, let's take one more question before we head into the draft and uh, do please put your questions into the uh, thread. Hopefully we'll get some more uh, answers amongst the panel. This one is, uh, have Shrines and Talents made the game better or more complex? Ooh, that's a, that feels um, like an oxymoron uh, to me. It but is. You know, when yeah. we're talking about having issues closing out the mid game, I feel like there's too many Shrines in the base yeah. is one issue. There's like five or something crazy. Sure, yeah. Seven. Like maybe put one behind the two Raxes, but not the one north of the, like the bot racks. Remove some shrines, maybe. I love talents personally. I think they're amazing. They they allow the game to be more diversified, makes yeah. item builds more variety, makes same hero can play multiple roles. I think that's all great. But uh, shrines outside, maybe too many in the base. I would say is the only okay. problem. Cap. Um, you know, I haven't been the the biggest fan of shrines and your ability to TP outside of them. Um, I don't know. I feel like it, it, the, a lot of the shrines are just positioned too far forward, too deep. Like you're basically on the river. So I feel like that killed a little bit of the the complexity of like split pushing and, and some of the things like that. We got immediately into 7.0. We got into this five man. We, teams like Cloud9 were just like, all right, this is our five man. We're going to bulldoze these towers and these towers and these towers. And then the shrines are open. So we could take those away. And that's a huge win. We've got yeah. total map control. I also uh, think it. I also think it restricts movement. Yeah. As like a as an enemy team, it's like you can do a smoke gank, but you actually can't smoke gank near the shrine yeah. because if you take a fight near the shrine, you're almost guaranteed to lose. Yeah. Right. If you, keep, like if you keep shrines in well. mid tier one tower, then you really can't get into these areas because if you actually you can't get into the actual areas themselves. They're and all, if you smoke gank, too. yeah, yeah, they're all they're all uphill. If you get into like deep area jungles, then there's like. There's multiple TP rotation points. Like, you can actually look at a triangulation and be like, oh, there's four TP points all surrounding this area, right? So if you get a successful gank, it's really hard to actually get out without losing anybody so you, because there's so many rotations. So if you, you're okay with shrines, but you just think the positions need to be altered a little bit. Well, the question was, does it make it more complex? Yeah. Does it make the game more complex? Or I, I, f I thought, like, immediately it made it simpler. But it's it's a concept simpler that we're, we're adapting. Simpler uh, no, I think it made it simpler okay. in that the, it limited some of the complexity of the uh, strategies. Of strategies where it's like split pushing really wasn't a thing. But we are ad uh, adapting that, right? It was like we started five-man death ball. Then there was a little bit of change, like tier threes. That was a big change that all of a sudden, like, okay, now you actually have to go high ground in order to take away these shrines. That adds a lot. Okay. Um, and then I, I think teams have also figured out ways to work around it. So, for example, we have um, we have... Pushing out the wave is really important, but also not necessarily showing yourself. So you have some of these supports and sort of things. Like this is why Coddle and Dazzle all of a sudden became like really popular not so long ago. So they, they were able to just shove out waves real quickly, not just for the laning presence early on, but also going into the mid game yeah. where you were just able to shove waves out, but also not. So you could still kind of maintain somewhat of a light five man unit without actually p presenting potential pickoffs. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, not sure if that answered the question or not, but it was a very interesting discussion. It can go either way. Yeah, it could go either way, couldn't it? Um, I do want to throw one more in talents. I was talking about this with gods. We think we've cracked the, the extra top of the talent tree for some of the underused, underprivileged heroes in the pool. Who? You get to 25, you get a seventh slot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember I was mm. unfortunately a witness to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, feel free to tear it apart and tell us how stupid we are, please, Peter. I don't know. That's what you're here for, Peter. Yeah. No, 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 if no, I no, just no, went we on a rant about you. something that is actually no, terrible you, about Dota, you've you got to call me out. You guys just love Dota, and it was a passionate conversation it about passionate conversation, some theory-crafted yeah. Dota. That's totally cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were just saying, like, some of the supports could do with the seventh slot. Some of the mm. less used heroes, like Techies having a seventh, could be fun. I, I'm never a fan of... I mean, I, I, I did not like... <laughs> added attack range things. Oh I did not God. like changing. I, I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've played Dota for a while, so yeah. I, I like the hard, like, okay. the set mechanics. Yeah. I don't like, st I don't like don't messing like with change. that too much. Please, yeah, please, don't, don't <laughs> more change. Dota players are stubborn, but yeah. I'm uh. sure if, if, if that was a thing, people would adapt and it would just become natural. 
Okay. What do you think, Poach? Uh, for bad heroes, I feel like it would just become like a Ring of Aquila slot kind of a thing. Because <laughs> if you're if you're losing and you hit 25, you just put something that's efficient in there. And most of the efficient items are early games, so yeah. Um, I, I just don't. But for supports, though, I mean, I that mean, extra slot. I, could I don't make think a it's that important. It, it would help for things like I need to drop a sentry right now yeah. or I need to smoke right now. But I think the backpack kind of already serves that function. Okay. It'd be it's more important for active heroes that have started. too many things. Okay. Oh, you don't want to talk about this anymore? Peter's just okay. like, Jesus Hooray! Christ, get me away from these idiots. Just let me talk about the draft. I'm just excited for the draft. I'm excited Here for this go. series. I'm excited to watch these guys play. I'm excited to watch some Dota. There's okay. the Monkey King ban. Yeah, and IO as well. Yeah, that's, EG's been kind of getting that as a respect ban against yeah. them. Even though I don't think they've played it at this tournament. No, I'm, I just kind of presumed that, you know, it was Timber not saw. just past. EG, but it was also a bit of scrim stuff as well. Timbers all ban. So I've seen a lot of teams favor the ban all of Ice, Ice, Ice's heroes strategy in the draft. So <laughs> it's like EG is going to continue it. All right. I got I to gotta pick the drafts, right? Yeah. yeah. If you I, want. If you don't get at least four out of five of the heroes. Okay. So Life Stealer is a start, right, Peter? Oh, let well, me, it depends let me on what the opener is. First. Yeah. Okay. Life Stealer, uh, Life Stealer, Invoker. Okay. Oh, actually just straight up going a double core combo. Wow. Amazing draft by EG. That would be <laughs> that'd be pretty intense. But EG showed this in like group stage day two, where they're like, yeah, life stealer, it doesn't matter, pick counters, and then the the invokers seem to really scale. They were just like, yeah, we can always carry. Oh, oh all right, you one out of two. That's your one. That's one. Your one mistake. God, it's fine. You can so recover. You can still salvage this, guys. <laughs> it's not over yet. You got to get three in a row, there, right? So you hold it. Oh, there's a whole game left. <laughs> we, we believe. You can have alternates. I'm, I'm not going to make you be like, no, it's, Warlock, Warlock's it's cool. only this support hero. I think a little bit of a deny pick. or Spirit Warlock, we've seen that combination quite a lot. There's a lot of team fight. Really tough to deal with. I feel like it also the Warlock also protects their safe lane, no it matter what Faces goes for. Also too. protects them from the Terror Blade that we've talked about. Uh, faces playing so much. Warlock kind of like an unsung hero against Terror Blade lineups through the Fatal Bonds on all the illusions. Fatal Bonds and then drop the rock on Terror Blade. He just... It just vanishes. You watched the the earlier series, right? What did you think about the the Darkseer pickup? It was good. We really liked it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah super strong. Yeah, I, I really liked it as well. It was just surprising that we have not seen. I uh, talked about it being a uh, good against Silencer because you go Guardian Greaves. Yeah, I like that part as well. It it man, it's a, like a very team fight meta, but Darkseer just doesn't seem to be getting that love because he's not an initiator, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I think compared to other team fighters, he's inferior. But in, in that game against Salter, it was good. Served a, a specific purpose, didn't it? Yep. Yeah. So we got Ember Spirit uh, up against the Life Stealer Warlock. Ember Spirit is actually a pretty good hero against Life Stealer, just because he's so mobile. Um, and he also against Warlock. Warlock doesn't really have any hard lockdown to deal with Ember Spirit, and it, Ember Spirit's also a great hero at kind of splitting up the map and split pushing. Uh, which is something that Warlock also really struggles with. Warlock lineups oftentimes just want to kind of do that like five on five team fight whenever his ultimate's up, and Ember Spirit can put some pressure on other lanes and potentially split up EGs, so they're not allowed to do that. I even like it for the laning Ember or Spirit combo is so good at pressuring a lot of heroes mid. There's like always the threat that you'll be searing chains into death kind of a thing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, a bad in band. Oh, EG fans. Paul, what does that mean? Uh, it means he loves them. All right, cool. Yeah, I feel like he would. Safe wouldn't. call, Paul. I feel like he wouldn't. <laughs> that'd be crazy if he had these signs and he was just like flaming EG. He's like, Sumail sucks. Sumail. <laughs> that's, his, that's his sign. Yeah, that's, that's his Sumail. What does it mean? Me. What does it mean? I don't know, but the Chinese fans are going crazy. What are these? What are they? It says, Sumail, bite me. I was talking to somebody the other day. How cool would it be if I just spoke fluent Chinese? Like, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, yeah. that would. Language to know right now, man. Being American's lame. You only know one language. A little bit, little bit of Spanish. Un poco. Yeah, that's my. <laughs> that's where I am. It's not too many uh, vehicles for life stealer in the forward position anymore. So. Ah, right, let's see what we got. You kind of down with centaur. I don't know, no, Peter. You better Magnus. hurry. Magnus. Oh, we're doing picks. Um, <laughs> oh, sure. I still like Invoker or Lena. Eh, I don't know. This is a tough pick. All right, we Invoker and Lena for your mids. What about uh, so what's support Centaur or offline? and Magnus are both in the pool. Yeah. Um, hmm. You know what? I feel like maybe I built myself up too much for this. 
I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm totally ready. Peter was like, ooh, I got this, guys. They threw me off with the Warlock pick. I was I was certain that it was going to be an Invoker pick. Um, e EG protecting their draft against Faceless and Peter, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew they were fighting two enemies? They have a lot of choices. Like, they only see one support, so I think it's unlikely that they would take their second support, unless it's a really safe hero. Mm, most likely. Yeah, okay, cool. Hey. Oh, you're just one off. That's all. all right. There was. Breath. Two more to go. I mean, it's, it's very good against Ember Spirit. <laughs> you can remove the, the fire fire shield, whatever it's called. It's, Sumail's good at the hero, I think. Pretty sure. He's definitely pressurable mid. That's maybe a scary part. So EG's going to have to get another roaming hero, maybe. And they're, like, all gone. Yeah, they'll get something for Zai. Uh, Tusk? Tusk is, a, that's that's Tusk is a definitely an game. option. They would have lockdown problems Although against Ember late game. A crit Tusk? Yeah, crit, crit would play the Tusk, yeah. I think. I think when Zai plays Tusk, I don't know if people ever watch his stream, but when you see Zai play Tusk, mm -hmm. he, he generally averages about mm, 17 to 24 deaths. <laughs> I, I think this is the second time you said this on panel. You're really, yeah. really. He just doesn't get, he just, you know. I feel like that's his, his tilt. When he's he's tilted, he's just like, I'm going to just pick Tusk is, and I'm going to run at him. Yeah, Zai does, Zai yeah. does tilt. Uh, I, I've got that before. I'm like, oh, Zai picked Tusk. That's Everyone's really like, cool. I can't like, wait for this game. Hope he carries me. <laughs> he's feed. I'm like, what's happening? My MMO. He's watching his stream. He dies for the 18th time. He's like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, that's I, exactly I, what I he's like. I'll hear him in, in, in game. Oh well, guys. <laughs> yeah. we, I tried. I, I think all the all the clips I've seen of Zai from uh, Twitch clips are all him playing Tusk. The the one was Monkey King like two shot him, and the other one was he was <laughs> playing that like nature, na oh, yeah, like yeah. BBC <laughs> the, the audio documentary. With him, yeah, about him like a like a penguin or dying or something. Yeah. And as he died, it was. <laughs> they they just keep popping one. up. That one was good. Oh, it wait, was pick, 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 pick. Beautifully uh, synced. Both supports are picked. They're going to go for their other support. I think Tusk is fine, but I'm not sure. I think they need maybe more lockdown, but then their roaming is maybe weak. It's good against CM. Uh, I would guess Tusk. I think that's my guess. Or, yeah. Hmm. CM. Okay. CM's not very good against Snakes or Warlock or Invoker, but he is like a nice kind of mana battery for Ember Spirit and Earth Spirit. What about just like uh, Centaur still in? Maybe. Kunkka. All right. Okay. A little more team fight. It's it's decent catch for Ember Spirit. Lots of team fight now for uh, for EG though. Definitely a, a team fight advantage with Warlock and Kunkka. It solves all, like all of their catch problems, basically. Well, Ember Spirit can still work around it, right? I guess so. It'll cost him two remnants, right? Um, yeah. If he jumps the first. I think that's more than good, though. If you time it right on Kunkka, like, if he's not like sleight of fisting or remnanting during when you pull the X back, you can kind of hit him with the torrent pretty reliably. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's like a little window, but. Right. It's it's not a bad tool. Ooh, clinks. Ooh, that hero's bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, I thought there was gonna be like Weaver or something, but maybe they just felt like they they needed yeah, a life stealer solution. Poker was Weaver would have been great. They needed a life stealer solution, and isn't that Weaver? Yeah, that that should have been. We seen clinks in the group stage. I mean, it's it, particularly effective, was it? Maybe it was just the Kunkka that they felt like Weaver's just too limited. But that's true. I mean, Kunkka's definitely a pretty decent tool against Weaver. Clinks just kind of wants to stand and fight. He can get an early BKB. All right, Peter. No, no, I get, I get, I get to see Faces this last pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it's know, I know that, I know that. So Faces is gonna pick the Ice 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 here. Uh, you can get your mistake back. I'm saying, if no, you, get, oh damn it, I was, uh, gonna, I was gonna have you predict their I'm deny. For, I'm two for four. So you said I had to get three right, right? That was the I test. Said, he said four. I said four, we'll, but you, we'll give you three. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, three. Three's fine. There's always hey, game. Is a there's always game hero, two. Sure. <laughs> There's that's always game two. <laughs> First game of the day. What can you do? <laughs> uh, the mantra of EG. Yeah. So this is offlane hero pen. Uh, Cook is going to be their Sunstrike setup right now, but maybe they could use another one. Centaur would be good for that. It's a pretty good team fight. EG probably wants to. Oh, yeah, there's a Bat Rider. I would say Centaur right now for Faceless. Makes it, it's a good like banning bat and then going centaur, pretty smart. Bat's a hero that does relatively well against centaur. We're definitely just super well versus centaur in lane. 
Does that just leave EG Mag? I don't think there's... Mag? Mag's a good option. I would say, yeah, probably Mag or Centaur for EG. That could be cool. They could make Kunkka a semi-core too, if they really wanted to. I don't know if they will, but probably not. I mean, it is. I think it is pretty important to have your support scale out. And Isis, Isis is pitching for a hero right now. It's got to be a crazy one. What's the craziest? Clockwork. Yeah, what's the craziest? That's not a hero in Dota. He's trying to convince Maybe Black to play off lane, I think, right now. Yeah. Ooh, Agnes. Okay, so that's. I think that's almost like a deny the pick. Block, yeah. And I mean, it works well with Ember. Yeah. It's not terrible. I thought maybe, yeah, I thought maybe they wouldn't go it because they had Clinks, but yeah, I, I kind of like it. I feel like Clinks will be decent against Life Stealer. They just needed a, a setup stun, or Spirit was not enough disable. I think it fits their lineup well. And um, yeah. Crystal Maiden mana, it's gonna be great for Mag. Mag Kunkka combo would have been nice for EG, but I think Centaur is a is a fine option. Uh, they could also go. S all right, I was gonna say Sand King, but Axe works too, so. I failed on the draft, but it's all good. Uh, which lineup do you guys like? Well, I think it's safe to pick EG regardless of what heroes got picked. <laughs> so I'm going to go with EG. And I do like their no, draft better, though. The, let's pretend the team plates are gone. I, I, I are actually gone. I, I like the Axe pickup. I think it's a pretty rare Axe game. Um, I don't really like the Clinks very much. I agree. You know, so I don't have faith against that hero. EG. He's going to need BKB just to avoid Kunkka X, basically. Yeah. And when you're forced on that path, it just sucks for Clinks. Yeah, it's Clinks, okay. you want to be able to build that snowball, right? Death, so, um, we're is, picking. Is, is there any point EG. in, in EG. asking? Yeah. So you're we'll all going to go EG. Yeah. EG. Absolutely. Okay. And that's your cue, Paul. Go Vexless. I don't know. I, <laughs> the lucky part about being the host is you don't have to give predictions. Uh, and uh, instead, the experts do. They've all gone for evil geniuses. Let's find out how game one goes for them as we head downstairs and go game side with Odie Pixel. Thank you very much, Paul. Indeed. EG versus Faceless, best of three here in the lower bracket. We've just seen the two drafts coming through. Exciting ends to both of them. Universe Axe coming out for EG. Ice 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 getting that Magnus. And as the panel mentioned, I mean, we kind of got to the fifth pick, Gods, and we're like, hang on, there's a Magnus still in the ball. Yeah. I think like both, teams would, yeah, both teams would have loved to grab their hands on it. Yeah. Uh, it's a possible block pick and something that pulls together both drafts really nicely. Kind of the empower nice for the Ember or the Life Sealer, but just having that team fight, that big initiator is going to be key in a game like this, enabling heroes like the Clinks. And Clinks, perhaps the most interesting pick, a hero Black has played quite a bit of, yeah. definitely like in his hero pool, like along with heroes like Slark, Anti Mage. And how effective this Clinks can be is going to be a very decisive factor in this game. I mean, yeah, we heard from the panel a lot of doubts uh, regarding the Clinks. I mean, well, why is that? Why is Clinks? not seem to be the hero to, to have as your carry at the moment. It's got a weak laning stage, uh, so he can be pressured a lot early on. And even if he has a good early game stage, if he gets caught roaming around with sentries, he can be very ineffective. So you've got to be very clever with where you roam. Make sure you're not running the sentries. Heroes like Axe can be very good against him. The blade mail blink can just turn Clink's damage against him. It's a very good catch. Kunker can be a good catch. So. It's a hero that struggles a lot against disables and kind of hits this strong timing. It's similar to like the PA or something where you get Deso and BKB, then you're quite strong. But you've got to get those two items at a pretty decent time. And talking about catch, you know, on EG's lineup, Zai on that Kunker, as you mentioned, Universe on the Axe. Between the two of them, they are going to have to do a lot in terms of enabling uh, the combos to come out from the rest of EG. Is it enough, do you feel, against the, the high mobility of a lot of Faceless's heroes? Yeah, it should be pretty good. I guess we'll see how it works as far as like once we get to the more five-man stage because that's where you've got Warlock Rock, you've got like really good team fight on EG's side, but if Faceless can land an RP, they've got Earth Spirit spells to hold up. And I feel like Earth Spirit's one of those heroes where you can look at a team and be like, oh, they've got the weaker team fight, but if Earth Spirit gets a well-timed silence done, if he stops a Warlock Rock coming out, this is the kind of hero that can be the X Factor. And we've seen XY himself be very influential on this hero. Absolutely. Uh, first pick material for Faceless in, in pretty much most games where it's allowed uh, to them. Uh, as we see from the runes, top rune, uh, EG will be able to secure that as well. So grabbing three, down bottom, Ice 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 and Arteezy having a bit of fun. Oh, very close. And in fact, Ice 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 bringing Almost. Arteezy along with him. He tried to clip him there. He was very close to achieving it too. I don't know if Arteezy quite realized what Ice 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 was doing there, but the max range on it was just not quite enough to get him onto that cliff. They're going to give Arteezy the 1v1. This is totally fine. Life okay. Sealer, one of the reasons to pick Life Sealer and why he's such a strong hero is because he can handle these 1v1 matchups and free up the supports to help other lanes. And That's we're going to see that at mid with the Kunkka and at top with the, the Warlock initially. Not sure where the war Warlock's going to hang around. He's likely going to fall back and stack some jungle camps. Yeah, we'll see what kind of movements we have coming out from XY on the uh, spread as well at the moment. Just 
looking to, to maintain that pull up on the top lane, keeping Black nice and safe. But uh, overall, these lanes, do you feel that there, there is someone with lead you already mentioned that clings a hero that can struggle in the laning stage elsewhere? Uh, are things continuing to look better for EG in these in these early lanes? Yeah, it's a stronger laning setup for EG. The life Lifestealer wins 1v1 against Magnus. Typically, I'd say, oh, Ice Ice Ice, he loves a 1v1 matchup. This is where he's a kind of player who can excel, but uh, Arteezy, as far as 1v1 matchups go, another player who we saw in the 1v1 tournament, fantastic. On top, x could be in trouble. He's trying to get away so he can roll out. Battle Hunger ticking him down, though. Universe with the chase down. It should be a first bird, and indeed it is. Universe will claim it. He says no chaosing today, Samael. And EG as well, also able to heavily harass Blackback. With this Shadow Word, he's going to fall pretty low. Universe won't go hunting too deep in the tree line. Very already rough. the strong lanes that you talked about coming into play. Yeah, Nuts is trying to chase down Zai, but he's... Oh, might get this kill if he can land the roll. Zai with the juke. Yeah. To the side. That's why I won't be able to find it. Saw it coming, had the ward and also the day, day vision, I think, was going to be enough in itself. So nicely done. Love the early battle hunger point. Not really the conventional axe thing to do in, like, if you're just off lane or jungling. But given that you've got a tri lane up there and you need, like, a good gap close, it actually slows movement speed. Oh, Ice 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 reads the Sunstroke coming in. But, yeah, having just slowing your opponents and also just having damage output to for a melee hero onto heroes that are running away, proving to be the difference there in getting a first blood. Very good start for EG. Mid lane is being handled just fine by Jab so far. And the fact you've thrown two sound strikes means there's very low mana on Invoker, who is getting rolled on, but just some harass. And that bottom lane, as you mentioned, both heroes finding farm. Neither in too much danger uh, in this 1v1. 9 for 4, 9 for 2 between the two of them. Nice, nice, nice. has used his shrine now. That's kind of where these off lane 1v1s. Often, like, safe lane with a good matchup would be fine, but is perhaps not as quite as one-sided now that offlaners get the shrine. In fact, with the wraparound from Zai, Ice 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 could be in trouble. Nice Initial shot. Torrent isn't going to hit. Ice 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 still has the skewer to play his way out of this one. In fact, he's trying to man up, but that's now cost him as he's been X marked back. RTZ should have the damage as Ice 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 tries to get away. Isn't going to make it. And Ice Ice Ice, I mean, you saw him manning up there. I guess just as it didn't count for the fact that that X mark was available from Zai. Probably knows that the X, if he tries to skewer away, he's going to get X back anyway. So he's thinking, I may as well just hold my ground and fight. Hope they back off and wait for the last second to use the skewer away, which almost works. If Arteezy doesn't block him there, it does, in fact, perhaps get him away. Seeing the top lane, not the easiest lane for Klinks. He's got CS and all, but he's had to have to use a lot of regen in this lane. I'm going to try for this kill. XY has the boulder smash, and Universe will be taken down. The Shadow Word heal from Crit. Not enough nice to save kill. him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no way to hold back that TP. So Crit gets out. Yeah, face this, getting themselves on the board. Good start uh, for Faceless to secure that safe lane. Feels very important that they get Klinks good early farm and don't let Universe do too much in that off lane. So they are doing a dedicated trial and we're seeing some rolls towards the mid lane, but very quickly XY return top. I think recognizing that if Clink doesn't get support in lane, they're going to be in trouble. Not to mention this axe is probably one of the, the more reliable kills to go for. You're not going to kill the invoker unless he pushes up really far in lane. You see on the top lane again, Zai, with the invis rune. Maybe seeing if they can set something up onto Black Universe. And crit in position to get ready to dive. Zai trying to close in, but will reveal himself under the tower. They know what's up. EG nonetheless just using this to put some pusher in, uh, pressure in on the tier one. Yep. And keeping black on his toes. Mid lane jabs. It's going to get caught by the sun strike. Top lane, the uh, play's being made here by EG as they close in onto Nuts. And it looks like there'll be no escape for the Crystal Maiden. TP reactions will come through from faces. XY looking to set up onto Universe with the first roll. Has to be careful with Zai still in the neighborhood. And these spins bringing XY down low. Black looked towards Crit but didn't have the damage to bring down the Warlock. So EG once again getting away with a kill on this top lane and forcing rotations. Yeah, the support kill is fine in itself. It's just meaning that Axe gets a, at least a decent laning stage. Looks like Universe is going to go into the, the Vanguard first. Perhaps going to opt to just farm up the jungle. Like he, he may just decide, okay, I've done enough to contest the Klinks' farm. Time to focus on my own farm a bit. As the three man shrine will likely lead to them to continue at least some amount of pressure additionally on that lane. And Definitely then, with an invoke on your team, you want to try and bully the lanes as much as possible since you can set up those Sunstrike kills. Mid lane. 
EG, once again, getting in close and personal. This time faces want to hit back. Nice boulder smash onto two. Yes. Zai falling low. And Shadow Word here will uh, keep him A-OK -okay and faces again. Just not enough firepower to really fight into these, this three-man. A wild searing chains into thin air. Jab's got the early point in slight, trying to use that for the searing chains, but it's got a very short cast range, so he just slightly probably pushed the slight of fists button, but it didn't actually go off because he wasn't in range to use it and then messed up the combo. Level 1 Searing Chain's pretty lackluster. So, as a result, they missed that kill. Not the end of the world, getting the early side of fist point, but it does seem like they're going to give mid lane elsewhere. Oh. <laughs> uh, Realising he was low, they, they hit the scan and, and somehow does go for a, a bit of an attempt. Pretty heads up play. 3-1 to one to EG at the moment. CS is certainly still there, though, for the members of Face This. Ice 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 continuing to get a lot from this bottom lane. Yep. As RTZ doing his best to zone out the Magnus. It's going to be a very far more oriented game, it looks like. I mean, PPD mentioned yeah. the panel, the EG players really like to buy their Midas. We're going to see another Midas rush from uh, RTZ in the safe lane. Very likely even see some support Midas's. Heroes like Kunkel Warlock can easily get away with Midas purchases if they want to. Maybe not both, but one. Definitely getting minus on one of your supports is fine, while the other perhaps goes for the utility item. But as it stands, I mean, Universe not rushing a blink suggests a slower pace of game from EG. They've done well to win the lanes, have strong lane, uh, laning setup, and often you see teams try and back up a strong lane setup with taking Tao's objectives. EG have always been a team that prioritizes farming and just farming efficiency, starving, using the, all the resources on the map to try and starve their opponents, and that's going to be much more the approach here. Win the lanes and use that to play greedy rather than win the lanes to take objectives. That's right. And the vision control back here for the side around that mid lane. A lot of movement was happening around there a couple of minutes ago. Now back towards the bottom, Zai having eyes onto Ice Ice Ice, but as soon as he gets a glimpse of him, he gets himself back out to safety with the skewer. And will of course be looking for that blink dagger. And we'll see what kind of a timing he can get on it. Obviously with the opening that he's had, it it could be some good, you know, a good pace for, for Ice 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 to hit if he can clear up these camps in safety and not have to worry too much about EG coming that deep across that bit of the map. Warlock off a bit too far, perhaps crit the level two shadow word heal is it going to be enough to keep him alive no it's not indeed the boulder smash flying through they'll lose crit eg are going to look to react with the lockdown of the cm torrent are holding back xy and slowing him down for the time being as well with a follow-up x mark and they give themselves anything more and it doesn't look like they can eg will hold back at least finding something in return for losing the warlock yep not really yeah the win faces we're hoping for with the free support kill we'll slow down warlock's level six but Ultimately, doesn't help Faces that much. Right now, Faces are being beat at the farming, the greed game, and that's something they're going to have to address. You see the top three heroes in terms of net worth are on EG's side. Not a huge margin, but when you're pre-10 minutes, have, winning all, effectively winning all three lanes is a big deal, uh, even if it is by a small margin. So Faceless, the response to this normally comes from like mid-game smoke rotations, but it's not going to be the fast. Like It's still a decent time blink, but they don't have a blink yet. So they can't address it from in terms of ice size and play as a blink. Perhaps what the, the uh, response is going to come from Ember. Ember's a hero who can smoke rotate. He's got the, the gap closed from the fire remnant. So if they want to try and contest EG's farm right now, it's got to come from jabs. But alternatively, they may just say, look, we're slightly behind. We're going to stay behind until we get this Magnus blink. So Faceless kind of have two options here. Set the tempo, get Ember active, or just play from behind with the Magnus blink. And they have started stacking those Ancients up, of course, as well here on Faceless. is half the map. To get Ice 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 that cash boost when he's able to take it. Um, I, mean, I imagine they will allow him to get the gold from that camp, do you think? Or do, do they give it to like, the Ember once they empower him up? Probably the cause. Uh, it, yep. He can't really farm it by himself. True, yeah. No, Even with Max and Power, yeah. he hasn't got, he hasn't got like, a Treads build. A treads Echo Saber he perhaps could, but with his build, he's not farming Ancients. He'll have a Blink Dagger, but by the time they even go for like the Ancient stack. So at that point, your Magnus is Blink, you'd rather give farm to the Ember or the, the Clinks. Just kind of efficiency, just stack it. Someone will farm it eventually, you know. If you're walking by the area and you have a chance to stack, you may as well do it. Hopefully for faces, not not universe on the axe. Because <laughs> yeah. he's halfway towards his blink. Maybe. And when he starts to move around the map, if they get wind of it, yep. EG would love to take that uh, bit of a kind of storage your cash away from faceless. May incentivize like some early EG aggression around this bottom bottom lane, but I think EG's timing is gonna come from like the blink axe. That's where at that point our TZ should have perhaps Midas Omelet. Uh, with even just like a uh, Midas phase, like he, even Midas phase, he can still do some early rotations, but 
We'll see what the, the call is going to be. So, I mean, crit continuing to, to find his way towards that level six. Yep. He doesn't mind if he gets ganked. If you get three-man ganked as a Warlock, seeing in the offlane as a five-position player, it's not the end of the world. Playing five-position support is often not very flashy. Often you put yourself in these spots where you know you're going to die. Mid lane, Samel okay. being gone on a quick tornado to hold back jabs and Nuts. Now the turnaround as Universe turning up. They have the X marks on for the Crystal Maid and they'll bring Nuts back. They'll take the CM. The rest will manage to get themselves away. And to go for a Sun Strike onto jabs. Jabs will be able to walk it off. EG responding very well to every bit of aggression. Like, while they are playing the passive farm game, they're also accepting that they can fight if they're around their towers. They can play the numbers game, which is Faceless going for a three-man gank, we fight them. Mid lane again, they nice do start. manage to get jabs with the X mark to deep of the torrent combo, not able to lock him down now. XY with the magnetize and the boulder smash onto Zai, they'll find the Kunker. Jabs still stuck in the middle of the with a cold snap at the Sun Strike, he's out to mail. Able to turn around and outplay the Ember. A big, big kill there for EG. I do not mind losing Zai for that at all. That yeah, was nicely placed with the Sun Strike there. Sumail's good start continues. Only behind our TZ, and that's largely due to this Midas pickup as Life Seal continues just to free farm away in the safe lane. We're seeing EG have a very different approach to, to most teams with their drafts and just overall game understanding of the patch right now. A lot of Midas's, a lot of greed. Strong lanes into greed is kind of the, the philosophy, at least from what we're seeing in the, the, the main stage games so far from EG. Their best of one against Wings and here in game one of their best of three. We'll see now the Ancients being attempted. I see they let get the gold, yeah. Ember. Whoever gets it, gets it is kind I, of the motif, you would know? love to get a bit of it. I mean, he's so yeah. close to that blink. Yeah, 1,800. So for sure. Right, looks like, He'll uh, leave it. Letting Jabs get the majority as uh, Jabs again. We saw him do this uh, yesterday, I believe, and the best of one when he was playing the Ember, going for the uh, Boozer Travel first uh, before the Veil in pretty much most of his games. Uh, the, the TP increased cooldowns, making Boots of Travel a better item in comparison. And heroes like Klinks want to rotate and get active on the map. And that's where if he rotates bottom, you want your Ember farming, pushing out a lane, and then TPing in for a team fight. So the early Boots of Travel allow you to play more aggressive in certain ways. Like, you can be greedy while being involved in the fights. Oh, this is such a fast Blink Vanguard for Universe, so that's, to me, going to be the big problem with a, a Blink Dagger up. This enables the Life Stealer so much to start finding pickups, but both Blinks come at the same Ooh. time, so... Which is going to be more effective. Yeah. I mean, absolutely perfect as well, the timing there. I mean, Faceless uh, have good damage to back up their Blink. Both Clinks and Ember mm. are ready to start getting involved. Clinks hasn't got much in the way of items, but he's a Clinks. He death packs a creep, he gets a lot of damage. All you need is Strafe to, to dish out damage at this point, so it doesn't need, like, a, the Deso quite yet. For EG, Axe Blink, so... Oh, oh. and they found oh, Arteezy at Faceless with a massive nice. pickoff. As Arteezy was looking to close into that armlet, which is a pretty crucial bit yeah. of the plays that EG want to make with Ooh, this Blink on Axe. They know the Blink is up, so that's key as well. Axe synergizes very well with the, I mean, both Life Sealer, but I'd say even more so in some ways with the Invoker, because Invoker just wants to sit around, farm very passively, play for the late game. This hero peaks around level 18, 19, 20 when he has, like, Axe plus more. And oh. he's great at just throwing Sunstrike. Axe goes for a blink call gank, you throw a Sunstrike, oh, and that was beautiful. We saw, you know, Ice Size Size yeah. cutting his way around the tree line, finds the Warlock, just jumps, skewers him back into the hands of his team. They're finding these pickoffs through some nice clutch plays. The deep ward, the clink scouting. This is the, the danger of a hero like Clink's. He can get very deep in your woods, and the circle's being drawn in the Radiant Jungle. At this point, EG have to recognize that their own bottom side of the map is not safe. This is largely what happened to in the in the liquid faceless game as well. You've just got to give up that area of control, play in the top and the mid side of the map more, and start being the aggressors yourself. Like the farming efficiency game has worked so far. They're still looking good in terms of net worth on their cores, but they've got to now use that farm on the life still of the axe. So your face is I mean, maybe even making it if they can make a move over to the raining jungle again. Actually top lane where go. universe gets the jump. Locked down and in control for Samael to land the strike on the CM. That's the combo. Axe doesn't even need a life stealer with him for some of these squishier targets. Mid lane jabs with a quick reaction, just making sure that Zai can't get that initial X mark. SSI yeah. will keep trying to push his hero to the limits at bottom. He wants to drag enemy heroes to the bottom lane, and with the good vision, he I think he realizes EG are unlikely to commit too many heroes down here. The EG don't really want to team fight in the bottom side of the map because of the faceless vision in that area. 
AEG just looking to finish off this tier one. RTZ does now have a completed armlet. So they have that, that synergy, that combination that they can pull off. Now a will fall, but Faceless remaining in this bottom lane. As you said, Ice Ice Ice, no plans of leaving until he gets the full reaction that he's waiting for. If EG want to defend it, does, I mean, they need to make sure they bring numbers. Like They can't just have like yeah. a, a lone axe head down to defend it. It's very likely he can get picked off. He gets scattered out by someone like a Clinks. The Earth Spirit stuns, silences him. He goes down. So you really need like multiple heroes to clear out that bottom jungle. But now they've dewatered. So they got the center on that cliff. Taking out Faces' as ward makes a, a much riskier place for them to, to be. Fighting away from your vision is not something you really want to do at this stage of the game. Well, to add to EG's team fight, they do now have Aghanim's completed. So Mail, of course, making very quick timing. Top, there's the combo, but the slider oh fist God, dodges, dodges there. Everything. And jabs. He should be fine here. Way out the X behind. Actually, going a little early. Has the second one. Black is there to help out. <clears throat> and in fact, it looks like Zai's going to be the one in trouble. The torrent will catch out the yeah, but Jabs getting very low. But this, again, just the, the amount of time that Jabs kept them working on him. Buying that space and, and time for Faceless to make the reaction worked out. And they'll go for the base sun strike. It's not going to connect. And Faceless again, coming out on top of these little plays. Yeah, those are the the kind of plays Jab is going to need to make this game. Like the Kunker versus Ember matchup is going to be very, very interesting to watch. If I mean, right now both teams have got their cores farmed. It looks like we're going to head into the late game stage. Midas's are being bought. Neither team is really putting a huge emphasis on taking a ton of objectives or forcing any kind of five-man death ball. There's objectives being taken here and there, but it's just tier one. So, looking at this game going late game. Kunker being able to catch the Ember is going to be a key factor for EG and vice versa. Jabs not getting caught, dodging that torrent, dodging that, that boat is going to be a very key factor for them in terms of turning these ganks around. Oi, oi, oi. Seven to six. EG still with the two top lead farmers. Yeah, that's definitely a, a good sign for them. Do you see as you kind of trickle down, things looking a little bit okay and better for Faceless in terms of the support? A lot of net worth on the Earth Spirit compared to like what the Kunker has, for example. Definitely the biggest deficiency is Black's position. Yes. He, he needs to do a bit of catching up here on this Clinks as he is starting to look less and less like the position one that faces need this game. And that's been a limiting factor in their ability to take objectives, find pickoffs. Like that Deso timing for Clinks is where you can kill Hero so incredibly easy, but he's going to get it not at the best time. He's kind of too late to force objectives. Axe is out farming him. And Axe is a very dangerous hero to, to play into as a clinks with that Blade Mail Sunstrike uh, out of call. So it's like EG gonna get themselves in the Roche pit and no response. They EG have scanned around the shrine just to see if a response comes through. That but was a Dire scan, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was as well, you're right. So Dire more they, worried about the invasion of their own jungle. Yep, there is a Radiant Ward there protecting this Roche. And does look like Faceless being caught somewhat unawares. But at this point, with all the heroes missing, you might suspect it, but imagine EG feel pretty confident with yeah. Roche. There was slow. a ping from my side size yeah. coming out just to the end. But absolutely, EG continuing to find the objectives and keep the overall kind of momentum yep. continuing to flow their way. Good setup. You know, you get that ward protecting Roche. You get two sentries down to make sure that Faceless themselves have no eyes on the Roche area. And you're like, well, Let's get in here. By the time we realize it, by, by the time they realize it's too late for them to do anything about it, since they don't see you going into the pit itself. Again, got that bot tier two tower. It's been a slow, steady job working away at that one. It was the creeps that got it in the end, but ultimately not an objective. EG even cared or really attempted to defend at any point. They sent like a, a warlock down there at some point just to get some CS and XP, but it wasn't really uh, EG's heart, wasn't it? They didn't care about that tower. XY hiding in the trees. Zai, what's the dust? Isn't going to find him, and they will actually lose Universe by the looks of it. Can Zai do anything in response? Has the torrent, the X mark as well. Samael coming across to join as well, but Ice Ice there with the two man RP. It's looking to save Black. They don't have any follow up on faces. They're just trying to get Black out of there, but he's not going to make it with the Shadow Word on him. He's out and down. Ice 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 in trouble now as well as Samael drops the tornado and the meatball, cleans up a second. They may have lost Universe, but this time it's EG with the quick reactions to make sure that Faceless pay heavily. 
for that just, movement. They're just responding to the aggression always very well with numbers in force. Like they don't even, that RP was great. Like it stopped the, the torrent from landing. He caught the Kunker, so Kunker couldn't get the X torrent on Klinks, but it didn't matter because Kunker misses his torrent. Well, hey, Warlock's also there. He's got a rock, that's even better. So all, all it takes from EG is to just, anytime Faces gets aggressive on their side of the map, Faces gets the initial pick. They have the Klinks vision, they have the Earth Spirit roll in with the stun silence. They're gonna get the kill, but EG, make sure they're getting one, two, three kills in return every single time. And that's just a continuous trend we're seeing. If faces want to make those moves, the second they find that pick with two or three heroes, their fourth and fifth hero have to rotate in so fast. And the problem is, you're not fighting near the creep waves. Jabs can't actually get there. There was nothing really to boots to travel to. So without Ember Spirit there, you don't have any way of dealing with EG5 manning you. Especially with this Desolator now on RTZ. He's getting even scarier for Faceless. They really need to, to they need to find that team fight. They need to be able to get Black involved in one of these successful rotations. It's, it's costing them time and it's costing them money. See how important the mobility is this game. Talking about Jabs being unable to get to like fights in that area. Well, he buys a blink. He wants to try and add some extra mobility for his team. Be a hero to kind of initiate and start fights. Blink in, use your spells, remnant away before you get caught by something like an X. And it is faceless once again going the aggressive. That ward there, they, they do see moving around that mid lane. Hey, RP, what are we yeah. looking like for size size? How soon till we've got that back? Six soon seconds. Enough, yeah. Yeah. Can he do something All big? Smoke on smoke. So grouped up. They can find the jump. They're on the high ground here, Faceless, but they're already trying to get themselves the hell away from EG. And in fact, TP's out. They don't want to fight into the ages. Yeah, they, they want to get out of there. Were... Nuts will try and hide in the tree line. It looks like he'll be the one left as the sacrifice as the rest of Faceless just separate. And still, there's two members still around in the neighborhood. Ice 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 hiding in the tree line. His TP is still on cooldown. Jazz will be able to remnant away, and Ice 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 should be fine as he hides in the tree. And indeed, we'll TP over to the shrine. I actually see oh, TP Crit. To the wall? Crit just manning up here, yeah, leading I... across into the enemy territory. I think he was trying to get, so yeah, he's trying to get a ward down. Does end up planning it afterwards, but on a solo warding mission, happens to scout the shrine TP, but. Again, Aegis is not something that Faceless want to fight into. They were hoping to find like a, a quick pickoff, but the second they realize EG smoking mm -hmm. them as five, they're like, oh wait, this is not a pickoff on like a life sealer or an axe or someone. This is going to be EG's full on five man force, and they can't engage the life sealer. He's infested. So if you want to fight EG as a five man, you perhaps like with a engage under the life sealer where you blow him up before he uses rage or any spells could work, but definitely not the approach we saw just there. And I think, well, good call from Faceless just to get the hell out. That was going to be a fight that went pretty dear, ugly. Dear. XY comes across, but that ward gives them the vision. EG, see his exact movements and take him out. And it is starting to look a bit rocky for Faceless. They're still yet to find that action that they need to, to really swing this one back in their favor as EG finding objectives, finding farm, and uh, really forcing Faceless to play their game at the moment. Yeah, focus getting very scary level 18 and this deep ward finds the magnus and that great is, pick. yeah 50 seconds with no initiation as such as uh, as the amount that they require they need that rp to jabs. pull big things off it's been x zai with the setup only be able to land the combo and not quite jabs with the chains just make it a little harder for zai to, to get that animation out i see played creeps given the waves now the invoker's ages has expired but Faces will still have to wait for their Magnus to respawn, so may still see another tower go down. EG really doing a good job forcing fights, using that smoke when they had the Aegis still, and then when they don't find the big kills just to CM, they say, well, let's just take these two towers at bottom, so they get multiple objectives, a CM pick off, likely to get this tier two mid, unless Faceless have something big in response to this. Black will struggle to fight until he has BKB still. Really needs it against the Kunker and the Invoker. With these objectives, the, the farm of EG's cores getting very, very nice there for RTZ and some mail, of course, in particular. 15,000, a clear 5k, nearly above that of Jabs. And overall, as we can see, the, the net worth starting to take a bit of a sharp turn for the worst for Faceless. Yeah, they were kind of keeping tabs, keeping close at least until that Aegis push led to like multiple towers. Like you got three towers and a CM kill. Up until then it was like, yeah, EG, they're winning the farm, the greed game, but Faceless aren't getting blown away. No, they're still not getting blown away. They've got options now with the Aegis uh, taken away. They're gonna, de yeah, they de-warded the, the Observer Ward by their base as well near the T3 tower. So they've just taken out two wards. They've t 
denied a lot of important, crucial EG vision, and he just has expired. This is like a, a good time for Faceless to try and take some pickoffs and get something done. They don't want to let EG go back to farming and wait out for another Aegis. Oh, we saw there as well. Jabs doing his best to, to push the lanes out. So, uh, Universe will be working towards the Shadow Blade, though. And that is going to make Jab's life a lot harder oh, yeah. when it comes to playing around the catch potential of EG. I can see the Shadow Blade himself. Let's see if that can lead to much. They've taken up post in EG's jungle, probably knowing that Radiant Vision around this area is unlikely. There was a lot of uh, wards thrown down deep on the faceless side when EG were being the aggressors, but EG can't play quite as aggressive anymore. Now, TZ is getting fairly tanky, going for a slightly different build on his Life Stealer. Opting for the Heaven's Halberd approach. Very much just an item looking to survive against the Clink's damage if he gets RP'd. If he gets hit by an Earth Spirit, Stun, Silence combo, and he's being pelted away by the Clink's, he wants to just be able to survive it. And this Halberd is an item that's received countless buffs over the recent patches. Still hasn't really been bought all that much. But Arteezy feels like this is the game that it will fit into. And faceless. And what is the plan for them now? I mean. Coming out across the map, is it getting to the point where they are going to want to wait for EG to to play a, a, into their hands and then to look for the counter initiation, or can they still look to go out aggressive? They want to make sure that if they get jumped, they're going to lose fights. Like if Axe gets the blink call with an infest, that's a dead hero from the get-go. So if you're not going to go aggressive and try and find picks, you can't let you have to avoid. Ice, 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 ice. Well, it's just yeah. DRP onto one. Will skew a Samael into the hands of Black, and Samael he's out and down. Big way to start the fight here for Faces, but EG all ready to try and set up with the turnaround. They get the cool on to Black. Black trying to get himself away, but a boat hits him smack in the face. Artor looking at Jabs. Jabs, has he got another remnant to go? He has one more, gets himself back up to the high ground. Universe though in again with the two-man call. It's a double kill for the Axe, nearly getting a triple. Two will loss. survive on Ooh. Faces, but again, three yeah. down. I think it's an all right fight, if not for the fact you lose the gem at the end. The Invoker kill, very nice way to start things off. Even though they lose the clinks to kill the Invoker, kind of evens things up, but losing your gem, a big deal when you've just bought it. You're at this crucial mid-game stage where Vision, second Roshan, can be very important, and that's where EG definitely come out on top as they're going to control that Vision moving forward. Here we have it again. I mean, I says, as soon as he sees Sumail, I mean, this great bit yeah. to start with, getting him into Black's oh, hands. That rock trying to save Sumail. He did a really good job pulling him away from the Warlock. But, but Universe, of course, yeah. always in the right place at the right time here. Setting up for Zai's combo. Nowhere for Black to run and hide. Nuts doing a lot here with the Freezing Field Glimmer Cape. Yep. Splitting up the fight. And Jabs, very lucky to get away with his life. But once again, Universe, bam. He like, knows when to go back yeah, in. Yeah, Jabs threw everything to deal with the Warlock, and Warlock had already used his spells, so... Like, you, you think about what the cause on Faceless did. Clinks, he took out, Clinks and Voker, they like trade life. Axe, makes, Axe goes for the, the Clinks there. And the other big hero that can get kills for Faceless in a fight like that, when Clinks is taken out for the Invoker, is Ember. And you're like, okay, who's Ember going to get for? He needs to make sure he gets something done. He can't really deal with the Life Stealer. I guess he, uh, the Axe was just too far away from to go in, but killing a Warlock just isn't really justified there for Jabs. He gets a Warlock. He has to then, his team then is kind of stranded. He used all his spells on that Warlock. Very hard for him to get to the axe. Perhaps he just didn't have the, the blink available. Mm, black and, and nuts. <laughs> Toying with RTZ is. Well, RTZ has got the superior backup. Universe. Universe with a gem is going to invade. And getting those cliff wards down, knowing that you can't really ward the low ground when you're up against those gems now. Gonna keep the wards and cliffs as much as possible. Top lane EG looking to take the final tier two that's been standing on faces this half of the map. Faces this in position though to make a push themselves happen. The full five man working down this mid lane and will look to force EG back. Up he up, but the Warlock Rock on cooldown for a little bit longer. Should be up around the same time though, so maybe another 10 15 seconds until that chaotic offering. But Let's see if, I mean, it's, it's get a lot of this, it feels like is on ice 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 to get something big happening with the RP. Universe with the Shadow Blade. Who's he gonna find? He will be able to get poor old nuts once again. The CM will go down, ticking out to the Battle Hunger. As Rotary spawns, but something that was gonna be difficult for Faces to contest, but something they likely would have wanted to based on the fact they've just picked up the BKB on Clinks. This is a key item for him to try and fight with, so we'll see if that changes the state of affairs. He still needs to make sure he doesn't get caught in that Axe call. The Axe, oh boy. They spotted Blackout, Universe. Blink on cooldown still, so. 
Is he going to be able to get the chase and catch? Yeah, the, the Axe Blink Call, uh, if that catches Clinks with a Sunstrike, very likely Black will go down quickly in the fight. They don't have good save on the Faceless side. Perhaps we'll see something like a Yul Scepter picked up just to try and counter the Axe Blade Mail Helix damage. If he gets the Call on the Clinks, you just immediately try and Yul's him to stop the spin action happening, to stop the Blade Mail damage. But I guess Magnus can theoretically afford that Yul's. EG straight into Roshi. I mean, the face is well aware that this is happening with the you know, EGZ warding the vision out of it and that successful scan. Can't but really again, move out. It's too tough yeah. with the, the vision factor and perhaps they, they've used a few smokes. Not sure if they actually have any smokes available at this stage. So, And if you do, you're probably thinking we might want to save him for high ground. There's the Yule. It's actually going to come on the Earth Spirit. So definitely like the pickup against an axe, but you've got to be very fast on it and not always going to stop all the damage. It doesn't stop the Sunstrike for one thing, landing. As we'll see Jabs work on this bottom lane. He's about to level 20, doing very well in the Ember. Not able to keep up with the Invoker or the Lifestealer with their Midases, but still good farm on the, the Ember Spirit. He's had to play very cautiously against the X catch as well. And yeah, it feels so risky when he comes out for these pushes, Jabs. Yeah. Each time, each he's sending multiple members there to, to deal with him and get the catch. See here, big difference in the carries in terms of farm. Black getting heavily outscaled by the life sealer. Here, that Clinks was picked up against as a pseudo counter, but if you don't have the farm, you're not going to counter him. He's been a lot more kills, but that's also because Faceless just haven't had as many kills. And that when your carry doesn't have to get involved in kills, that's not necessarily a bad thing. If anything, for EG, that's good. If Arteezy can farm and not he's not needed to fight, all the better. That means their draft, that means their lanes are working. EG with the smoke straight into Faceless's jungle. Face this already backing up. It looks like neither team will be jumped on here. And face this is safe in their base. This Shadow Blade is such a dangerous item for Faceless to deal with on Axe. He's so good at roaming around finding those pickoffs. And here is like Clinks can't rely on the skeleton walk for survivability anymore. And Faceless can't buy a gem against it. So until like five more minutes go by when they have a new gem, they've got to really stick together and play super defensively anytime Axe is missing from the map. He can probably solo kill the Clinks with a Sunstrike. That's very, very difficult for Faceless to to get anything done as a result. Ice 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 has gone full and he has the Whoa, refresher all, a, already. Where's his farm come from? I can't believe he's actually managed to farm that, but yeah, yeah. with the Midas and the GPM talent. That's pretty he's crazy. Just, he's actually ridiculously farmed. I, I, he spent a lot of time bottom lane split pushing. He was the one that was really the reason for that fast tier two, da tier two going down. and. That's some incredible fun. That's like that's the kind of item that can turn this game in faces away. You can like last fight he solo RP the invoker. He now would have a second RP for the axe, for example, and then yeah, you actually can get win the two, that fight. Two different locked. Yeah, and, and now he's level twenty. Uh, pretty significant, plus fifteen percent on the damage and cleaver yeah. the empower. Not they, they're fighting with this water as well. There's the jump. Ice Ice says he's grabbed two jabs with the damage as well, bringing them down. Like they've bursted two out of the fight Jumped already. Looking for the two. control onto RTZ, but Ice 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 he's out of mana, partner. chung down by our tour. They'll lose the Magnus, but Samael's chased down by XY and Black. They'll turn their attention towards side Faceless. They've found three so far. Can they get more? They can. They'll bring down the Admiral. RTZ looking for Black. Skeleton Walk skill. Still on cooldown for seven seconds. Black trying to eat a creature. Keep alive. Nuts comes in with the Glimmer Cape. Make sure that Black survives. Black should be fine. He has been disarmed, but he's still got the distance. And RTZ being bullied around here <laughs> as he goes from target to target at Faceless. Oh, no. They laugh at the poor child. RTZ has been bullied and Black... Oh no, the bully becomes... No, it's fine. The bullying is successful. Poor old Artur. They can't get him. Oh no. He's toggling somebody. Oh my goodness, right. They've triggered him now. He's angry. <laughs> RTZ, he's, going for he's more. out, he's back for vengeance. You bullied me once, now I'll rip your skin off and eat your flesh as he takes down a double. Oh, that four man stands around Well, it. there we have it. A oh. bit of a lesson to the bullies out there. One day that kid will sort you out. But all in all still, obviously, not too great for EG. They lose a lot, but RTZ surviving, that's got to be worrying for Faceless. You can't kill the carry. Invoker's got travel, so he can immediately TP to this top push. They've, I mean, got an Aegis. Yeah, that's the big thing here. Arteezy can at got least an RP chip away. Though, still. Yeah. Now, second RP. Did refresh immediately. 100 seconds to that refresher comes back up, but one RP likely enough. Probably doesn't want to go for the, the life seal. He wants to make sure he gets like an Invoker or Axe type hero. Since the life seal does have the Aegis, he would happily soak up an RP here. 
And that's going to be a free tier yeah, three straight, tower. Yeah. Straight here onto the racks here. Oh, it's easy. Someone needs to stop him. I don't think they're going to be able to before these racks. Melee's down. Oh. Faceless. Very, very aware of the power of this life stealer now as Arteezy has just blossomed there. Not at least getting the Aegis. When they had him yeah. full men surrounded, if they just got in the Aegis, that wouldn't happen because EG probably are not going to go for that high ground push into RP. Oh, here's if the they don't have again. It. I mean, look at it. Arteezy. Tucking and turning, but they're low on mana. Oh, These the armlet toggles. toggles as well. I think well. it was a miss from Black as well. And again, I'm mean, yeah, a low ground heck. miss, but that was just some really nice play from him. Not insane. Arteezy has been receiving a little bit of a flame for yeah. some of his performances earlier on in this stand, but now stepping it up here on the main stage and showing us the plays that. That we've come to expect from the kid. I mean, that right there, you see why Halbert is a good item. It saves his life there. With the disarm as well as the extra evasion kicking in, and something Clinks will have to address with an MKB Bloodthorn type pickup. Those look like, a, oh yeah, the Orchid into Bloodthorn is going to be the, the approach this game. I think it is, may tempt a, like a Manta build from Arteezy to get out of that silence. Not sure what he's going to go for, or perhaps he'll just ask his team, someone buy a Lotus Orb, you know? Someone help me out. Although Lotus Orb's perhaps Kunker's job. He's got the Arcane Boots, can disassemble. Nice positioning for faces. They've got a good ward for this fight. There's the jump in, immediate. Taking out one, but Ice 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 is there with the reaction, but the reaction to the reaction as the Warlock Golem is dropped. Nuts trying for the freezing field, but they'll hold him back. Already looking to chase for more. Warlock's been left on the back lines. Crit will go down. This plus 60 damage doing work there for Nuts. Black only just getting himself away under the cover of Skeleton Ward. It's easy, in fact, that are the losers here. They've lost two. Sunstrike won't connect. Zai looking to try and make this trade better, but there, again, is another RP. Ice 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 will set up a third kill for Black to get himself involved in some ale. Oh, he's angry. BKB Pock, he wants this CM. He'll get the CM. Very hectic fights. Both RPs used may lead to EG trying to press their advantage. Oh, good jabs. Finish this, Samael. 1v1 me, son. Here we go. Samael will gladly accept the challenge as he turns around, drops a meteor jabs, has to duke it out. Black. Oh, Samael in trouble. He's Can he clean up the kill? And Samael with that. Out to safety. They search for him in the tree line. Who's He's got the towards gem? the left. There's no vision oh, on Samael's going oh, back for the kill. Okay, that Jabs is has got the jam. It's a risky kill attempt yeah. for Samael, and Samael realizes he's out. He, he won't just... play around with fire for too long. He ran through the clinks, and I think Ember's like, oh, he's over here. Let's go head back that way. But oh, take oh. a regen. Oh. Take that regen, little boy. Oh. Heavens Someone... Albert. Can he on the toggle? Oh, he cannot on the toggle his way out of that. <laughs> that... You can have the regen. We'll just kill yes. you right out. <laughs> the bullies are back. Oh. That time. They get the job done. Faceless have managed to... It feels similar to the Liquid game in some ways where they're like, yeah, yeah there's one carry. Well, this game is two. That game, there was just a Naga. Yeah. But they make sure all three of their core players go late game. And this seems to be a recipe for success with Faceless. I mean, it always has been with Ice Ice Ice. He's a player when he's got a lot of fun when he's having a good, ha having a good game. Faceless are winning games. They can't just get Black and Jabs farm. They need to have three good late game scaling players. Ice 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 with Refresher on Magnus is the kind of player you want to be seeing in the late game have a huge impact. And for EG, we're not seeing that kind of item progression on the late game axe. He had a fantastic start. It is just like a two core lineup. Life yeah, is going to get kited. And things are at least progressing in a way where it doesn't feel like EG have shored up their late game, even with a Rax advantage. They need that next big team fight. Next Roche is going to be crucial for them. Ooh. XY, unfortunately for himself, nice sitting under the ward. Or is it? The boat comes through Universe as well with the call just to make sure that they can find him. Can't face this, do anything in return. Black trying to go in on the axe, takes a huge amount of the blade over. Oh, Sun Sun's in there with the RP. He's grabbed Universe, he's caught some ale as well. Black backs up with the skeleton ward. Jabs already coming in from the side, looking to cut the off EG. Remnant burst, one, bam, two. He manages oh. to chain it beautifully to pick up the double. And Jabs may not be done yet. Some mail. It's going to be chased Beautiful out. Beautiful Ember play. Very nicely done from Jabs. So we can see why this is one of the mids that Faces love to grab their hands on for him. 6-1-6 six, six this game. Nearly having the money pretty much for that yeah. Octarine as well. They draft around the strength of their players. First stage picking an Ember, the only team in this tournament who really do that at this point in the event. But 
with good reason with how Japs has played it and things going faces' way in that fight. They commit a lot of heroes for that Earth Spirit. That Yules yeah. forces the Axe to blink in for a call. If not for that Yules, Invoker perhaps just solo kills the Earth Spirit. But by getting that full commitment, Klinks is able to get the return kill on the Axe. He slightly mistimed his strafe there. He tried to wait till the blade mail was... I mean, it was oh, where... Oh. Size, size, size. He just refreshes oh, straight up, gets that RP the off the Arteezy. The damage wow. just ripping through the Lifestealer and face this. Maybe see if they can get more. They look towards the mail, but the BKB's BKB will out. wear off. He needs to be careful. This is just backing off. The Sun Strike, not enough damage. Black survived Ooh. because he had a hearty meal just before that fight. That was such he a well played Sun Strike. Creek. And Black managing to oh. barely survive. That is, I mean, Sumail's playing a hell of a game. He's doing oh. everything he can. Oh. They want to oh, secure they worry about Roche. Roche. Yeah. Okay. So they, yeah, they want to try and secure Roche while RP is down. They know RP was just used, Roche is up. They basically trade the buyback for having an Aegis on Lifestealer here, which is basically like, well, a sec either way, you've got a second life on Lifestealer. Yeah. The difference is your opponents don't get the Aegis. For if Faces sure. got the Aegis, you could find yourselves in some trouble, and Faces aren't even going to contest this. They're like, we haven't got RP. We've just chewed through a lot of our spells. Black is still pretty low. No way can we stop Rose from happening. So I like that buyback. It, it gets Arteezy a guaranteed Aegis and negates the fact that he doesn't have buyback because of that. And as you said, they didn't have the RP for the Roche, and they're not going to have RP for the high ground defense. Still about, what, 40 seconds, I believe, at least on that Magnus RP. Jabs is approaching level 25, though. See what he can do. The Refresher being in the back. Well, sometimes you don't need RP if you can hit the Skewer, but Ice 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 won't quite get it onto Artor. He's got the Refresher in the backpack, making it cool down a lot slower on the Magnus. Something that could come into play. I feel like he should try and swap that out, even just for his Magic Wand, but... It's easy. To man up, disarm onto the clinks on the sidelines. Universe keeping eyes on jabs. Has, like EG. has jabs got 25? Not yet. That would be a big, big level to get. Although it does look like EG are going to back off for a little bit, go for the shrine. So that will perhaps give jabs the room to hit that crucial level 25. Likely yeah. going for the cooldown reduction. You're against the life sealer who can easily get out of the searing chains. And we're seeing teams just get a lot of like lotus orbs and stuff against the searing chains if need be. So. I feel like the cooldown reduction is more likely going to be the, the way he approaches this game. Axe TPing top. Uh, didn't bring the life sealer, so don't think he finds his kill. Oh, tries for the call, cool, but jabs again. Oh, out. I mean, uh, coincidental that he's quick. Juke, but it works. He, he got rid of the gem then, or is it still on the ember? Oh, yeah, he doesn't have the gem anymore. That was a bit coincidental, but he'll take it. Oh, mid lane. Not easy. Can be they careful the here. They may be able to kill him once here, but the Bloodthorn damage is enough. That's He's down once. That's the Aegis gone. And now in that five minutes, He's got no you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful if you're Artor. Ice 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 has an RP as well. Arteezy, he better run. The X is there. They go for the bait. They catch out Ice Ice Ice. The Magnus is out and down. 85 seconds, no buyback. And now EG, looking to combo for more. They've got the Tornado onto XY. Earth Spirit's out. Battle Hunger onto Nuts. They jump in from Jabs. He's looking to try and clean up in return. But now he's surrounded. The disarm from Artor. The bash as well. Jabs is out. Samael again. The second Tornado. Now looking for Black. Hexed up. Arteezy ready to close in. The buyback's coming out. Jabs buying back into the fight. Black will survive. Nuts goes for the freezing field. But immediately. Yules there from EG as they take CM out. EG, they're not done yet. Universe seeing if he could have the potential to catch more. Black on the side. What a clutch hex onto the Magnus. They baited that so incredibly well. They saw Ice 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 coming in, looking for the RP on the life sealer to try and seal the deal on a dieback, but just wasn't able to anticipate, perhaps not even seeing the, the hex pick up just yet completely blindsiding him and with that EG find themselves with a big lead here and perhaps able to take a second lane of Rax. I'll buy some time with the the glyph and Arteezy still does need to be careful against the Bloodthorn. Universe is fishing. 15 Wants seconds to find for that Magnus. They've got to get something done before Ice 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 is back. Arteezy straight in with the rage. The hits Universe on the back lines catching out Black on the Klinks. The Klinks is out. Buys back immediately. XY is down. 80 seconds without the Earth Spirit, and at the same time, on the back, crit was gone on by Jabs, but Jabs couldn't quite finish the job as he has to back up. They've lost the Melee Rex in the middle lane. 
And EG getting a lot done as they continue to just amp up the pressure ever since that RTZ buyback and making sure that they find these objectives. Preemptive spell use paying off. We saw it at top where the Ember, he just remnants away before the Axe calls. We saw it at mid with the pre-hex before the blink. And we see it there. RTZ just rages. He knows that he might get jumped by Nero Spirit. Nero Spirit blinks as he rages. Tried to just get like a stun silence off. Perhaps they kill him, I don't think they do, but it would at least stop him hitting the racks. And it baits the entire team. Urspirit suddenly finds himself right on top of a Rage's lifesteal. That is the worst possible position for him to be. And as a result, we'll see another melee racks going down. Faces will have to play from behind. They have got the double RP in the late game to do so with Ember Spirit. Fantastic late game hero as well, but on the Radiant side, that Hex catch, we've seen how effective it can be. Not to mention the fact that Sumail's Invoker has just been phenomenal this game. And here we go, EG. Now with the strong uh, position by quite a mile. Two minutes only left on Arteezy's cooldown. The buyback uh, over on the side of Faceless, as we can see. Black, Jabs, and XY still having at least four minutes to wait. If they go down in this window, it could be all over for Faceless here in this game one. It seems something that EG want to play around without forcing it too much. They have to be wary of their life stealer who doesn't have buyback for a, a much smaller window it's, though. Uh, so. It's nearly there. It's, it's nearly there. They can look to wait that out and then try and jump onto Faceless, but fighting near the Faceless base is always going to be oh, very difficult. Faceless, they don't care that their buyback's on cooldown. They want to go Just for something big. They smoke out. But EG have this high ground advantage. Go on to. XY's been spotted by this ward. EG know that something's up. Jabs will get the jump in. Finds one with an ice ice. Immediately comes in with two. They've managed to catch out the two backline supports. They'll take one. Universe coming in with the reaction. But the second RP is there to hold back the axe. Samael gets taken out. Black has just too much damage. They'll turn towards Universe and Faceless with that movement, with that play. Once again, Artur, the last man surviving, is out as well as Faceless. Team White EG. A I... massive, massive fight there, and an incredible, just, re we saw that they, you know, EG saw XY, but as soon as they saw him jabs, in immediately with a slight, and then the Ice 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 just blindly going in, knows that he's going to get multiple heroes. Ice 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 Dota, he missed the second RP onto the, the Life Stealer with the Axe, he went for two, but even so, he got the initial start. And look and at this damage yeah. from Black. Black finding Sumail, that's the other key thing is there, Sumail didn't have the support to fight into Black. Black's BKB was just used to snipe the Invoker. Invoker without, I don't, I don't know if he, I don't think he has a Shivers Guard or anything like that because he went for this Hex, so he doesn't have much armor to fight against the Klinks and he melts to that physical damage. Yeah, we see he's got the plate melt in his backpack. He's now going back for the Shivers. He recognizes what's crushing him in these fights and it's that single target damage output. Let's see what they can get done though. 10 seconds and RTZ will have buyback available. Well. Not sure if you want to use an Invoker buyback at this point. You may just give up a lane of racks. But they'll use the Life Stealer one, trying oh, to hold up. Oh, Straight in deep here, looking for crit. Getting himself back out, just creating space to make sure the faces can finish off the racks in the middle. Bit lack, not messing around. Just BKBs and runs out. They don't get the range. And they bring him down, so pretty much dead. But they get that melee racks that they were after. Good and calls force on, out RTZ's buyback. Yeah, good calls on both sides. If you don't buy back like the Life Stealer there, they can use that window with uh, three heroes dead to do some, perhaps get a second lane of Rex. Uh, and by buying back the Life Stealer, Faceless can't commit as many heroes and they able, they're able to preserve the Invoker buyback as well as the Axe buyback. Nice, nice, nice. As we can see, not only been having just a great game today, yesterday, as well, pulling out some massive plays for Faceless. This Lincolns will help a lot against that counter initiation we've seen from the Hex. Not going to be quite the same solution. What's he got? The minus 35 respawn time. Oh, you got to take that, yeah. surely. Yeah. That's, Shockwave that's cooldown, yeah. so good. Yeah. You know, not much, not much thought into that one. Yeah. And EG, EG again, looking to fight around this spot. Be so careful. Dire have maintained some decent vision around that area. They can try and pop these smokes with either an invis or a blink hero and then use that vision advantage. And they, actually, they know EG's there. They saw that ward get planted, so they know they were on that left side of the cliff and likely smoked up. Roshan would be lovely for EG. This is the minimum respawn time now, so Faceless only now have to start worrying about Roshan. They're probably like, all right, surely it's going to be at least like a minute till Roshan. It's one of those things where in your head, you normally wait like 30 seconds to a minute before you go push out and check out Roshan, but it will be a very fast respawn. Oh, straight up, there we have it. That definitely helps EG. They're kind of already in position. They've got one decent ward in the area. Very hard to maintain vision against Gem, and all of Faceless's vision was set up for that last fight. So they've got nothing around this Roche pit. 
how scared EG are right now just depends on whether they think faces have a smoke, among other factors. And it looks like Universe is going to be in charge of trying to scout out any incoming smoke ganks. And looks like they should get this. Huge, of course, again. A bit yep. of a repeat of, of the course of the game we saw, what, about 10 minutes ago, where we have this RTZ's buyback on cooldown for a fair few minutes still, but they get themselves the ages. Yep. Last time they had that, they were able to, what, get away with the melee racks in the middle lane that they took down. Maybe we'll see a repeat towards the bottom lane, and that's going to push, of course, face this closer and closer to being mega creeped. See how they respond to this one on the faceless side. May have to start considering just RPing that lifesteal even though he's got an Aegis. If he goes onto the high ground and just starts rage hitting your buildings, you can't just let them get mega creeps without contesting, so. I mean, that, that is the nice thing about Ice 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 this game. We are seeing a Magnus that he's not waiting for the flashiest of RPs. He no. goes in immediately. Samael or, or even yep. just the, the supports on the back line. He knows that as long as they're the team that gets the jump, there's a high chance that the fight overall will go their way. Last time he took out the two supports and because of that, Invoker was a free kill for Black. Black was able to isolate Invoker. There was no Axe Call, there was no Kunker Ghost Ship, there was no Warlock Rock, probably most importantly, no Warlock Rock. Warlock was positioned in Fog in the trees, but he got scouted by a, a beautiful slide of fist from the Ember Spirit. That's, that chains onto the Warlock really set up faces perfectly, but faces need more of that. They're still on the back foot. They're still up against Aegis. Cheese and EG still have all the tools they need to try and break high ground. It's just gonna be how they play around the Magnus RP and how they manage to make sure that these supports don't get caught on the back lines, for example. Interesting, Crit has the cheese. Perhaps just, I mean, the other, like the cores don't have many item slots for it more than anything. And perhaps thinking that he might get caught in like a spell and be able to survive like a Ember combo if he has cheese. You here cheese up go. against the Ember to guarantee you get your rock off. EG, looking to get the ward down. They, they are underneath the eyes here. Off faces, eyes, eyes, eyes again, jumping in. He's grabbed the two supports, refreshes. It looks like he's waiting, holding back for the, the second one to follow through. It's actually at the front of it all. The Samales have found Jabs. Jabs low, there's your second RP. Again, eyes, 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 looking for the lockdown. Universe is in with the counterplay. Gets the call off onto eyes from the sideline. Black trying to bring down RTZ, but he hasn't quite enough got enough damage to do so this time eg they'll turn towards black the battle hunger should indeed take him down and he's out no black for two minutes this is eg this time round claiming the superior fight they just looked a little awkward we saw ice 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 get the rp onto the two supports but then he just seemed like he realized his they damage dealers yeah. weren't there he was focused on the fact that up towards the top jabs was having his work cut out by the rest of the side yeah he saved he held off on the second rp i think recognizing that his cores weren't there to dish out damage so i think it was the right call but the problem was the fact you went for that first rp and your cores weren't on top of them and ember getting controlled there by sumail really deciding things and now the Klinks by it looked like it just came back up. Klinks is back, Magnus is not, and they also know Magnus doesn't have RP, so even if Magnus respawns, he won't have that RP for at least a good minute or so. An incredibly disjointed fight there from face is heavily costing them. EG still with that Aegis on RTZ as well. Black alone, as we saw, just not enough damage to cut through this life stealer at this stage. As they'll find the racks, EG. Only needing to take that one from the mid to claim those megas. They just go for it with the rage, knowing that there's a window still with RP on cooldown. Back up in 35. Feels like they can just walk in rage and take it for free. There's no real response there. Maybe just comes down to whether or not they're quite wary of the exact cooldown of that RP. Even without the rage lifestyle, they can just send Ford Spirit Sire and just chip away on this one. Yeah, TZ is just likely going to try and rage from the low ground. He's actually being well. X even. Very safe play. And he goes, and that will be the, the final racks. They're gone. Mega creeps out now for EG. And she faced us. They do have the Empower so to help push these lanes back out, but it's a, not an ideal position for them to be in whatsoever as EG, yep. after a bit of a rocky kind of late game, getting themselves back in firm control and certainly looking to be the side to take this game. Daedal Ascember Spirit coming out, so has transitioned into the physical damage. I was about to say, is it time for the Rapier? We'll get the Daedalus first, and then likely, if, I mean, if time goes on, he'll love a Rapier, but he's not going to have money for that anytime soon without a, a, a team fight victory or two, so we'll see if he can get there. Likely at that point of the game where you just say, let's replace this Veil, get Rapiers, and hope for the best, but it's EG in firm control, likely to shore up perhaps even another Roshan before they try and take any kind of a risky fight in the enemy base. If Faceless try and leave the base, then yeah, you take those pickoffs that you can. Axe is going to be fishing around. Same for the Invoker with the Scythe of Vice. Find the pickoffs where possible and 
Jabs is definitely a good target. Hasn't got the Lincoln Sphere. That was kind of maybe his downfall in that last fight. He got hexed up and controlled, and as a result, didn't dish out any damage onto the RP targets. It was hard to fully tell what happened in that fight because it really was two different fights. It was straight out like by where what the tier two was and down where the yeah. tier one would have been. And if it was two fights that were close together, then I think that's okay for faces because at least Ember's in the neighborhood. They can try and help him out when he gets when the hex wear, wears off. He can dish out some damage, but it was miles away from the RP. There was not a point of damage dealt in that RP. Here we have it, EG closing in again around that mid lane. They know that there's still this window. If they can take down Black or Jabs. No buybacks for these cores for a good three minutes, four minutes. Hard to get out to that secret shop to finish off your Daedalus too if you're, you're Jabs. They're trying to make the journey now. EG, Universe going to look for the, the vision here. Goes up towards the high ground. Will be grabbed back. There's your first RP onto Samal. They'll take the Invoke. No, he's still alive. But oh, they don't kill him. The BKB comes out. The boat flows through from Sai Ai Sai Sai. Oh, no, Samal still survives. Finally goes down as Jabs gets him out. But the buyback will be there. They've lost the CM. They've lost Ai Sai Sai. He will buy back along with XY. Universe looking to finish off this Jabs Ember Spirit for a second time. And they will. Jabs and Black are out. This is almost certainly GG as evil geniuses with these last few fights. That's got to be it, execution Owen. and just outplay yeah. a faceless. Yeah. They've done it here in game one. They will take it 56 minutes in. Quite the game. A game where it looked to be EG having the easy opening. Faceless hitting back hard in the mid game. But at the end of the day, I just the performance from EG in these team fights was pretty immaculate. EG stepping up. I I think the great thing about this series is just how much both teams have stepped up yeah. their play from the group stage. Because these are, you're looking at Faces, last place in their group, EG, second to last in their group. Neither of these teams had a good group stage, but what we're seeing on the main event is really some top class Dota. Faces really pushed this game to the limit. Ice Ice Ice, standout player on the Magnus, absolutely fantastic performance, but for EG, it was the whole team. Everything came oh, together. For sure. And Samael in that last fight, not yep. dying. I mean, well, he eventually gets caught, but eventually, and, and then, then the buyback he, he the comes buyback's in, there anyway, yeah. hexes at just the time he needed to to lock down jabs, and the call came as the hex was wearing off. Like EG's coordination, their team fight play, they're all on the same page. Everything is working well together. Very cohesive unit, and it was tense. I mean, EG have pulled out some fantastic, exciting games here in the main mm. stage. Love, love watching them here, and for faceless. They got to try and bounce back in game number two. For sure. As you said, Face is certainly putting up a fight, but they've got to step it up just that little bit more if they're able to take down EG as it stands. EG taking that game one. Some fabulous display of team fighting from both sides. Back over to Red in the panel to hear what you guys have to say about that one. Thanks very much, Owen. Yes, uh, we'll go back to our commentary team, of course, for game two. But yes, yeah, sweating bullets up here. I think one of the members of EG uh, was a very tight game indeed, Peter, wasn't it? I knew they had it all along. <laughs> you were okay with that, were you? It was a fun game to watch. It, yeah. it was a ton of back and forth. I think that we were pretty worried that Faceless really kind of wasn't up to par and wasn't really, mm -hmm. you know, they were like major underdogs, but they... Forgot that they, now, haven't we? Even though they lost, they put up a hell of a performance, yeah. huge RPs from Ice 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 throughout the entire game. I was amazed that he was able to just constantly find two or three heroes. Yeah, this fight especially, picking up two heroes at the start of the fight is huge. Warlock, uh, credit on Warlock, uh, he got picked off a lot. It, and, was, uh, it is hard against a Klinx, though. Invis hero, tons of physical single target that's damage. True. One thing I noticed, uh, not in this fight, because I don't know, I don't think they had it. Oh, they did have a gem. I think Warlock was carrying the gem, maybe. I'm not sure who was carrying the gem, but I felt like yeah, I think so. the I'm heroes sure. that were in the back for EG were carrying the gem, which yeah, allowed... This is the, uh, the Alteezy moment. Yeah, this was pretty wild. Hope we're definitely paying off two misses right there that probably would have killed them. But I think I like to think that the, the confidence of the Aegis also um, kind of helped with those armor toggles, right? He actually yeah. did evade every single Clink's attack in that short moment. But yeah. it was uh, it was it uphill as well. Uh, yeah, that might I'm sure that might have contributed. Sure, but yeah, that in combination with the halberd. But that was an awesome play. That was so cool to watch. It looked really nice. It was uh, faceless were definitely playing very well. But I think that that ultimately like the draft is going to be one of the problems for them in this game. It just looked like a, one of those games where Evil Geniuses was always going to eventually close it out, and faceless were kind of clawing their way back through, but. It was, it was somewhat set against them. They just had to, to play. They probably had to outplay Evil Geniuses in order to win this game. So, look, that was a really nice fight for them because they the Magnus was shadow blading in and they were positioned well to see him come in and the gem was up on the front. And they, oh, they had a, they had that sentry ward there and they saw him coming in before he actually got there. I think, uh, like I was trying to say earlier, I think in a lot of these fights, especially the ones that went in favor of Faceless, the gem for EG was on like the back lines. So the front liners didn't see Magnus coming in and when Magnus saw 
the heroes in the back who had the gem, like the Warlock and like maybe Axe was back there or Kunkka, he was able to blink and RP them. And then when that happened, Ember and Clinks were able to follow up along with Earth Spirit. And, and when EG lost one to two players in that initial RP, that's when fights went really poorly for them. Yeah, basically uh, this fight as well, same thing. I think Black did a great job on the Clinks, so he made the hero look pretty pretty solid. I think it helped a lot that he had Empower, because usually when Clinks finally starts going into defensive items in the mid game, his damage starts falling off. But he hit consistently hard. His his item itemization I thought was really good. It was like Dragon Lance into Deso. It was like enough HP, enough range, enough damage. And that was that was what we were kind of scared of, right? Is that if he goes into this earlier BKB, he's just not gonna have the same kind of impact. So he kind of had to go the Deso. I think it was very smart of him to just. Embrace the the heavy damage and not try and pick up the defensive item too early. Deso Clinks is kind of like the new. I don't know. We don't see a lot of Clinks, but it, when we were seeing a bit of Clinks, I know like we on EG were a team that played a lot of Clinks, and Deso was uh, at least for fear. Like he thought it was like a pretty standard item almost. Yeah. Um, before that, the Clinks meta kind of went like Orchid, but I think that fell out of favor, and Deso is kind of the staple. But it was cool to see the hero actually do something. I feel like every time I've seen Clinks play recently, it's kind of fell flat. Um, but he had a pretty big impact in this game. His positioning was really good for most of the team fights. Uh, I really felt like it was one of the few Axe games that I think it, that hero is pretty viable, but I didn't really feel like Universe was actively shutting Black out too much. He shut down a lot of other heroes, though. Yeah, I, a lot I of mean, other ones, yeah. I, I, I think it's time for the MVP discussion. I was thinking towards Universe. I don't know what you guys think. Because I, I feel like his what he did in the first like 30 minutes, it just like made the game so easy for EG. Like gave them such a big advantage. He had a nice laning phase and got really, really farmed. Even like late game team fight initiations. I mean, he got RP'd a few times. That sucks. But uh, I, I, felt like he, I felt like he set up a lot of team fights, too. Sure. I think Blade we should just calls. give it to Universe on the basis that every time he's had an amazing game, Samao has been like, half a percent better and has snuck the MVP away from him. So That's true. Samuel has had a really impressive yeah. tournament and we talked about a little bit how carry players were uh, not a great patch for carry so we see a ton of like star power from uh, the mid players but and this is like a below average Samuel game right? He has four deaths. Yeah. True. He's, he's usually like zero or one so yeah. a little bit of feeding this game but <laughs> I'm glad they pulled out the victory. RTZ had a really good game as well. I think um, I love the, the, the Halberd change was a really good item build adjustment just because Clinks is pretty good at killing him um, and you can use it to stop him from attacking. I just think it was a good pickup. Um, yeah. Definitely I like to see heroes or players uh, take like one item and fit it into a normal build and it absolutely fits the situation makes it better. We don't see a lot it's of Halberds cool. picked up. Yeah, it's but a, it worked out really well here. It's good at breaking Lincolns now. It's like 18 second cooldown. Yeah, I saw it like in that one fight, in the one of the replays. Have they changed the range on Halberd? Uh, possibly. I feel like the range was like pretty decent. It's it's one of those items that if it gets buffed, you just don't care. So all of a sudden you look yeah. at the notes and it's <laughs> like, it? oh, 12, 12 you know plus in a row. Yeah. I have no idea. I think it, it's like 500 maybe? I could see it being no, at I least think it's 600. Actually, I think it's, it's actually a little bit longer than that now. But it used to be. It used to be like that. It used to be shorter, right? Yeah, it used to be shorter. It was like shorter than actual range heroes, which just felt awkward. It's really good against Clinks. I think it's four and a half seconds on range against range heroes, three seconds disarm on melee. Yeah, yeah. and Clinks only really goes BKB. He doesn't like get Manta or anything. So yeah, seems what, good. What do we uh, what do we make of Black's performance on the Clinks? It was, it was, good. was good. good, wasn't yeah, it? Good. Uh, that very last fight, he didn't follow up. Like there was a nice two man RP by Ice Ice Ice, and I was like, where's the damage? He was, he was busy on the top of the fight, I think, with the other heroes. It was yeah. very So maybe just some, not the best coordination. Yeah, I, I think one really big thing that allowed him to do better was that um, Faces took really fast uh, safe lane tower of EG and the tier 2 as well. And when you have the whole jungle open like that, even if there is a shrine, it just allows Clinks a lot more space to move around, grabbing neutrals, uh, looking for kills with full HP. That kind of thing completely changes. But if you get shut out on a Clinks game and you, your team hasn't taken a tower yet, your hero feels worthless because you're pretty much just there for ganking and some DPS transition. Unfortunately, they just couldn't keep that control that they were able to get with the early towers, and that's really where Universe came in. It's the most important yeah. part of the game. First 30 minutes is where Faceless had to win. That's kind of where Clinks is super good, though, right? He's, like, an incredibly strong right after, like, level 6, level 7. Once he gets that Soul Ring up, Ring of Akilla, and he can kind of move around, and if he eats, like, a hard camp creep, he's got, like, over, like, what is he at, like, 11... It's, like, oh, it's got to be around 2K, almost. 2K? Yeah, HP? like, at least, like, 1,500. Yeah, you eat a, you eat a large creep, and it's, like... 500, 700 HP All for right, well, sure. Regardless, like he's super strong. I was going to say like 1200, but. It might be, uh, I was going to say 1500. So we're kind of in the middle it there. At, it starts at some, 5 great, per, some great analysts. Yeah. <laughs> it starts at 5%. It's like 550 HP when you eat a big creep with level 1 ulti. Pretty sure it's 5%. And that puts him up to. He's probably around 800, 6, six to 800, depending on treads, when yeah. he's 6. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So he'd be like. Did you say 11? Yeah, 1100, 1200 total HP. 
Okay, but I'm th yeah, I was thinking strength shots. Okay. All right. 2K might be fine. All right. 2K was, like, was too well, high. We're having a discussion. It's fine. Yeah. No, no, Dragon it's Lance so was there. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, Dragon there, there you go. Out of 220, that. There you go. Yeah, so uh, it was cool to see Clinks. Uh, I missed the hero, but I do feel like he, he doesn't power farm. He doesn't clear waves. Yeah. I, I think he's not necessarily in the meta, but we talked about Faceless being a team that may have to like break the meta in order yeah. to win this series. Yeah. And cool to see Black playing in particular. Just in the sense that we, we've spoken a little bit about his inflexibility cap in the past. His uh, insistence on maybe the, in the, the past. ASK farming uh, style. Oh, uh, uh, okay, you're going to go back to that story. <laughs> Come on. Can't keep moving back to I that story. I'm going to give him so much, so much bad press. No, but I, I think it's good. I really like the way that Faceless, um, in, in some ways, covered some of the weaknesses of the Clinks, where, as you said, they didn't have that kind of wave clear. They had uh, instead they had Ember Spirit and, uh, and nice. Magnus to be able to provide a little bit of the cover of that. So you had this, like, two pretty dangerous, like, frontline heroes, uh, a solid initiator, but you also had some a little bit of split push and wave clear that allows clinks more time to be able to farm off the jungle because i think what you never want to be doing as a clinks is really aggressively like pushing out